and Michael Remus. What is up, Winnipeg and Manitoba? Let's do this. A uh, much better atmosphere around the WST chat today after a much-needed win, snapping the Jets' losing streak and uh, getting back in the win column with two big points heading into the uh, finale for the homestand and our finale for the WST pack. Looking forward to seeing you all for what is absolutely a must-win game on against the Calgary Flames on Thursday. Uh, we're going to uh, break down last night's win over the Los Angeles Kings, the new look of the Lions, a big night for Cole Perfetti, and much more. Mike McIntyre of the Winnipeg Free Press is going to be jumping on with us after we get through some of the audio from last night and more discussion. And then later on today on the program, the Fink joins us. Uh, got a chance to get out to the rink and take in the Moose on the weekend as well. Team's playing much, much better and uh, has really come back from what looked like uh, a position that was going to cost them an opportunity in any playoff hockey. So uh, we'll get the latest from the American Hockey League affiliate of the Winnipeg Jets with Fink. A little bit later on, um, just want to thank everyone that's listening to us on podcast right now. And of course, shout out to everybody that is with us in the chat right now. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Um, just before we bring in Michael Remus, huge thanks to all of the sponsors that make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen each and every day. The great people at Princess Auto. Cool Bet Canada, Little Brown Jug, the Winnipeg Jets, Canadian Club, Consolidated Supply, Modern Man Barbershop, Manitoba Battery, Wallace and Wallace, F Apparel, Aikens Lake, Wilderness Lodge, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club, and of course we will get to a why not question of the day for not Autocorp, but Waverly and McGilvery. Michael Remus. Oh, does that feel good just to start off this program talking about a win as opposed to uh what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. This city needed that. The fan base needed that. And holy smokes, did Rick Bonus and his team need it. Yeah, the Jets certainly needed six game losing streak. You're at home. Uh, there's a nice crowd there last night. Yeah, you don't want to get to seven. You're moving towards the playoffs. So they mix up the lines. And it was, wasn't the line that, you know, we had been clamoring for the Velarde Shafley Ehlers line that did all the damage. It was the Perfetti Connor. Uh, Monahan line and so much talk about Kyle Connor leading into the game and he was awesome with three assists and Cole Perfetti uh, out of the press box onto the second line and his second career or tied a career high with uh, three points in a game including the game winner so it was a great night last night uh, lots going on us feeling good here today on a on a Tuesday uh, yes indeed now just before we get in uh, to the game uh, I was in the stands last night. You were in the press box. Mm -hmm. How did you handle the pressure of being selected to be the guy yeah. naming the three stars last night? Man, a lot of pressure. Uh, Eight o'clock start. Uh, I know a lot of people don't enjoy, but for those of us who have to put our kids to bed and go to the game, it was perfect. Got to do both. I got to my spot and... Uh, it was Drew Mandel of Illegal Curve was in my spot, so I moved over and sat on another one. And then Scott Unger from Jets PR came up to me. I thought he was going to you know, yell at me for sitting in the wrong seat, but no, he gave me the honor of selecting the three stars, and I thought I was there for a stress-free night, Hustler, but a lot of pressure, oh. man, picking the three stars. Thankfully, Connor was there beside me. I was talking with Dave, Illegal Curve, Jacob Stoller of Hockey News was next to me. So we had a, a team. I was texting you, 
soliciting texts from friends. Input, I took it very seriously. I had a running power pull of the three stars at all times. And it's funny, they asked me to hand it in 10 minutes left of the third period. I'm like, it's a tie game. How am I supposed to know? So I actually handed in um, at the tie game time uh, Connor because he had three assists and Perfetti and Kevin Fiala. I thought he had a great game. Um, he had a great game and had that beautiful goal. And I had to pick a king. It was a tie game at the time. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen. And then thankfully, you know, Perfetti scored the winner. And so uh, they swapped Perfetti and Connor for the three stars and Fiala came in third. So I was very happy. It was a very easy game for picking the three stars. There wasn't a lot of tough, tough decisions there. Well, I, I mean, and, and listen, there's so much to get to coming out of the uh, shakeup of the lines mm -hmm. and the win last night. But uh, yes, that young man that you selected as the number one star was in a lot of ways, the story of the game. Um, going into the lineup basically because Tyler Toffoli was sick and um you know getting on the board early scoring early was not only huge for the team the crowd everything uh well, last night but you could really tell that that gave Cole a jump and we've been waiting for that to happen for a while you know he did score that goal <clears throat> at the end of a uh, sort of a rough night on the road trip when um you know the team was really not playing very well but to score that way that he did last night, early on, I thought was a huge vote of confidence for Perfetti, and uh, he really took it from there on that new look line. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Perfetti, you, know, you think of him as a smallerish guy, as a playmaker, but he's got a lot of goals where he's in and around at the front of the net, he finds the opening, finds the right spot, and jams it. And scoring first for the Jets, huge has for a team that hasn't scored lately. Uh, you're in a tough game. And listen to this. Number us, 37th time this season the Jets have scored first. Uh, their record in those games, scoring first, 31, 4, and 2. So scoring first has been absolutely huge. You know, first one, it gives you the confidence, but I think you can kind of dictate the way you want to play. You're not chasing the game. And again, we had talked about Kyle Connor needing to pick it up. He didn't score uh, yesterday, but he did have uh, three assists and you know, getting a shot on net there and Cole Perfetti going in and uh, finding the rebound. And yeah, he, he even talked after the game, like he wasn't really sure if, you know, if he was going to be in after the morning skate uh, to fully had the illness and, you know, he prepared like he was going to be in and uh, he was certainly ready. It's kind of funny. I, I joked us after he had the two points. I was like, wow, Perfetti showing that, uh, you know, time on the press box. You know, it was well spent there getting ready, or means he should have been should have been earlier. I'm not sure which way way to look at it, but I mean, he's I mean, look at at has look at the team leaders. Like he is certainly he was like fourth in scoring at one point. Now he's taken a bit of time off. He's got 35 points, 67 games, 17 goals. I think you know it's been had a bit of a rough stretch there, but I think he's a guy you can certainly count on for offense. And he made a nice pass yesterday and scored, you know, for an assist and and scored two goals. So it was a you know excellent, it's probably as good of a game as you could have predicted for a guy who was a healthy scratch coming back in. Oh, there, there's no doubt about it. I mean, that was just such a, I mean, a, a bonus for last night. Well, I shouldn't say a bonus. I mean, he was a massive reason why the team was able to snap the losing streak and win the hockey game. By the way, just talking about the the three stars, this is too good from T. Will not to mention. I would have ironically picked PLD as the third star just to give the fans another chance to boo him. Whole oh, was he bad last night. Like, if if the fans were not booing him every time he touched the puck, you would have had no idea that number 80 was suiting up. He was just a non-factor pretty much that entire game. And those are the sort of performances that have been driving people nuts in L.A. all season long. And you would think, Remus, that if there was a game, I mean, the fans were all over the guy from the get-go. You would have thought that maybe that would have sparked something in Dubois. I, I'm happy that he sleptwalked through the game like he's done so many times this season. But it is a tough look. I just sat there with the, the guys I was sitting with watching, just shaking my head going, you know, he got everything that he wanted. He got the big money deal. He got to go to a place where he could be himself. If this is himself, um, that is very, very tough for the Los Angeles Kings. 
Yeah, it seemed, you know, I agree. Uh, you, know, you didn't really notice him until he started getting booed, and he didn't make much of an impact. I thought his line mate, uh, Victor Arvidsson, who scored on a huge clapper. Like, you couldn't even see that thing go in the net. I thought he had an impact. But Dubois, yeah, you said slap block through the game. I was going to say going through the motions, just um, didn't have that uh, that given F factor, wasn't noticeable. I know he's had some good games this year, and you know, I know there were some articles with him. Ted Wyman spoke to him in the Winnipeg Sun, and I know uh, Jacob Stoller did a thing on him in the Hockey News, just talked about you know how in Winnipeg in his first year, you know he had a really tough year here, and his first year in L.A., maybe he's a guy who has a problem adjusting, but... Uh, I know adjusting to a new situation, but this is, you know, what you've seen before. And, you know, we're all waiting for him to be that guy from the series against, you know, when Columbus beat Toronto in the playoffs. It seems like that's more the the yeah. anomaly. And, you know, you want to see that guy from game one of Jets Vegas last year. And you're just not seeing that, you know, that often. And like Can you, you look at his- if he was pulling this act in Montreal. Like if he actually went, I mean, it, it would, you know, it's a good thing that he went to LA and, and listen, the Kings still have a great fan base. There's a lot of people that pay attention to them. They have great media covering them, but it's not a Canadian market and it's sure as hell not Montreal, Quebec. Yeah. If, if, if he, if he had had the season, if everything had played out the same, except he ended up getting to Montreal, it would be one of the most disastrous seasons that any player has gone through. And I, I just laugh thinking about the way the Montreal media would have handled it. Yeah, it is kind of funny thinking about all the Montreal fans and commenters that we had in here saying they're going to get him for a bat of pucks. And they were so excited to get him. The guy's got 35 points in 74 games. Uh, Cole Perfetti just got his 35th point uh, yesterday in 67 uh, games. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, like who is there... You know, Velarde was out, so I think the Jets were certainly winners. I mean, they have the Kings got the guy in the lineup, but that contract is is rough. Uh, that long term commitment, if he continues to play this way, uh, continue to look look poor. So uh, it's been a tough year uh, for him, but hey, maybe he's got a chance to redeem himself in the playoffs, and maybe he's more, you know, more used to being an LA King next year. We'll have to see what happens. You know, uh, it, it's amazing that Dennis Bernstein brought it up yesterday, and I just popped PLD into the old search, and you know what they're talking about? Mm. A buyout. Are they? The cost of a buyout. Um, it would be a $1.13 million cap hit for 14 years, but would free up $7 million in cap space for the next seven years, and would also save the team $31.6 million in actual money. And I think if they did the buyout at this point, because of Dubois' age, if I'm not mistaken, he'd only be getting like 33% of it as opposed to the higher number on most buyouts. Um, and this is just from the you know, LA King supporter. I'm 1,000% on team buyout PLD. Even after one year, the guy's never been an 8.5 player. He never will be. His career high was only 63 points. I was hoping his game would continue to take positive turns and it didn't. And paying 1.1 for 14 years is better than having him. Um, he can change all of that with a strong playoff performance, of course. I mean, we all live in a, in a world of tons of recency bias. But for those of us in Winnipeg that had seen the ups and downs of Dubois, I don't think we, anyone could have imagined it being as, uh, as bad as it was this season. So... Um, Anyways, the Jets are done with the Kings for the year. They win the season series, two and one. Uh, lost the game, what three? It was the third game of the season, when of course Velarde got hurt. Had that great win in L.A., sparked by Shifley, Ehlers, Velarde, and then those players back together again last night. Although not really a big, big factor. Was what did you think of the top line? Um, yeah, they, it seemed like they had trouble generating off. And there was, a, there was the one power play. I thought Velarde looked good. There were, you know, I thought he was the most noticeable, had a lot of shots on net. I think Ehlers always, you know, makes things happen, can try to, tries to make things happen when he has the puck, maybe a couple of giveaways there, but, um, they weren't a huge factor, uh, in terms of generating offense in yesterday's game. There was actually a period where I'm like, man, like, is there even a shot on goal here? It was very slow, 
uh, in that second period for a bit, but then it exploded uh, for a couple goals, and uh, certainly the excitement picked up in the third period. But yeah, the first the top line it wasn't. You know, it's funny. You think you put them together, they're gonna it's gonna be December again, and they're gonna be you know out chancing, out scoring. It wasn't that yesterday, but I think you got to stick with it and not resist the urge to pull the plug. Although they might have to change up some lines for next game with Cole Perfetti making impact and um, Nito Nita Rider getting hurt and uh, Tyler Toffoli. You know, we'll see what he is. The Jets were supposed to practice today. They're off, so we don't really have any updates on anything. But I think they do have some big decisions to make now coming, you know, going into Thursday's game. Well, I mean, and, and it's nice to have, you know, to not be talking about a situation where you're desperately finding, trying to find somebody that fits and works with a couple of top players. You know, you've got a young man that was on the outside looking in that got a chance to go back into the top six and, you know, had his best game in months. I mean, you know, for Perfetti to score, um, you know, the way that he did last night. And and listen, getting on the, the score sheet was one thing. Um, icing the game with the winner later on was huge. Made some great passes as well. Like, it, 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 we've been talking about this for a while. Just something needed to go good, you know, go well for Perfetti. And it happened early this game, and he never really looked back. I mean, two goals, one assist. He was a plus two. Three shots on net in just under 15 minutes of ice time. And, uh, you know, listen, you get the winner in the fashion that he did last night. This can only be a, a, a huge boost for him. What it means going forward, a little more difficult to uh, decipher. Although, I think we've seen one thing from Rick Bonus and coaches in general, it, especially when you're going through a losing streak the way the team ha- has been, um, you know what? If all of a sudden you do something and it works well, you keep doing that. So I'd be surprised if Perfetti wasn't in a similar situation in the lineup on uh, on Thursday against the Flames. I don't know how you take him out, how you'd be like, hey, man, you had a three-point game. Uh, you scored the winning goal for us on a beautiful snipe past uh, Cam Talbot. Uh, sorry, kid. You're out. Um, I think the guy, he's shown offensive capability before. You know, he plays second power play. And, you know, I don't know. Again, I don't know how you how you sit him down when this is a team that struggled to score goals during that losing streak. Uh, again, we'll have to see what happens with Nino Niederreiter. But, you know, Tyler Toffoli, he had, you know, struggled for a bit. So, uh, Cole's turn. I think give him a shot. I think he's a guy who's shown he can produce 17 goals on the mm-hmm. season. And, I, again, I, I don't know how you break him up, so. Uh, I like the look of that line, and I think you want to see more of it uh, going forward. I mean, it was a team, they lost six in a row. Win one, and then you switch it up, the winning combination. I don't think I don't think that you do that. No, no, I'm with you. And as far as the top line, I mean, listen, they weren't great last night. I mean, uh, for everyone that thought um, or was hoping that you were just going to put those guys back together and boom, they were going to be that same line that we saw take over that game earlier in the season on the road against the Kings. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer. I mean, I thought they did have some moments. I thought they didn't have the puck enough, and they did spend some time in their own end. And unfortunately, you know, the shot attempts on either side were heavily skewed towards the Kings. But I think they do need to give this a run of a, a, a little bit longer. I mean, the bottom line is, Remus, we know what the results were over a long period of time with the Shifley and Connor combo. Um, and we'll talk about Connor in a minute. Um I think this is a time where they need to give this a little bit of run. And listen, easier said than done after a win. Um, but as they say, they sort of ran that other option into the ground. And we know where that got them. Um, their worst stretch of games uh, all season long. So I expect and I'm hoping to see, you know, a few more games for Shifley, Velarde, Nikolai Ehlers together. And as far as Kyle Connor goes, I thought he responded really well to, um, you know, to, uh, you know, moving to the second line, to playing with Sean Monaghan. He seemed to have the puck a little bit more. He was certainly skating. I mean, there were still some defensive moments that I don't think are ever going away with KFC, but he, um, he had jump last night. And, you know, I think when that first one went in, you started to get that feeling that, um, you know, maybe there was, you know, a potential for that line in particular to sort of be game breakers last night. And, 
you know, Sean Monahan playing with um, playing with Connor is an interesting an interesting foil because he is not as fast certainly as as uh, um, Mark Scheifele, but he does add a level of defensive responsibility that I think Kyle Connor in particular and Cole Perfetti can use. So um, listen, when you know when Connor gets on the board with three assists, when Cole Perfetti gets three points, Monahan scores. You're going to get give those guys another run. And I guess the big question, we'll get to this with Mike a little later on, is, of course, where Tyler Toffoli fits in the lineup if he does come back. Because, um, you know, there might be an opening on the Lowry line depending on what Nino Niederreiter's situation is after leaving the game in the third period for stitches and not returning. Um, or maybe you bring him back slowly and he plays, you know, with his old buddy AI on uh, on a fourth-line role. I'm really not sure, but... The one thing I do know is that I think Cole Perfetti earned another opportunity to be in the lineup. And with the performance that he had last night in the production, I don't think it makes sense to keep him in the lineup but doing it in a fourth-line role at limited minutes with players that, frankly, won't bring out the uh, the best in him. Yeah, that is a really nice combination. Kyle Connor, he had three assists, three you know secondary assists. And sometimes you know you might value those you know lesser than than the first. But I mean, he did a lot to create on all of those goals. Uh, you know, on that's what the second one, you know, skated around uh, all around the offensive zone before dropping it to Morrissey, giving it to Monahan, you know, entering the zone, passing it down to Perfetti, uh, who gave it to Morrissey for that goal. So I thought Kyle Connor made a huge impact. We should note those guys were on the ice for the three goals, four at five on five. They did give up, uh, give up two against as well. The Ehlers, Shafley, Velarde line uh, on for one against. And zero four. I mean, all the goals uh, came from that one line. Um, so we'll have to. Sorry, uh, the other one was the uh, Perfetti was on with Ehlers and Nemestikov for that. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens. And um, I thought that you know, again, they were strong, keep keeping together, and let's see what they can do going forward. You know what? And just for the psyche of the club, so important to get a win, obviously, but also to do it. Um, you know, sort of coming to the aid of Lauren Brassois, who was not great last night. And listen, we've been spoiled. The goaltending for Winnipeg has been unbelievable all year. And you'd have to go back months for a dud start from LB. Um, he let a couple in from distance that I'm sure he'd like to have back that don't normally, you know, go in. And when you have a team that has been, I don't want to call them fragile, but, you know, it's just found ways to lose. You wonder what that was going to do overall. I, I, I will admit, though, late in the second, third period, the way they're playing, I, there was a weird sense of confidence that I at least had that hadn't been there in previous games. And they got it done. So uh, nice to see the offense sort of come to the rescue of the goaltending, which is uh, usually been front and center in most conversations about Winnipeg Jet wins. Uh, I am seeing lots of, oh, WHT now, Winnipeg hat talk. Yes. New lid, folks. <laughs> and I know any time I wear a hat, it somehow goes back to one of the infamous hats that I did wear before, not coincidentally, a Fanatics hat. But I was at the Moose game on the weekend, and I figured... You know, I wanted to get a new hat heading into the playoffs. I did not want anything done by Fanatics. There was a sweet, a couple sweet Mitchell and Ness ones that just didn't fit quite as well. So I went with the snapback. And for those of you watching, you can see it really close. That is the, I believe, the South, the Jets South Asian Heritage Night logo. And I got to tell you, it is sweet. All the logos they did, the Philippine night, the um, indigenous night, they came out so well. But I thought that this would be a good one. I'm trying to get a good mojo. New hat, break the losing streak. And now we'll see whether this baby can make it two in a row in the game that we absolutely have to have on Thursday for the future of the WST pack on the line. <laughs> okay, and listen to this number. It's unbelievable that the WST pack is 0-3. That was the Jets' 24th win at home, 24, 11, and 3. And the WST pack has been there for, for three of those 11 losses. Uh, pretty, pretty awesome. One thing about last night's game, the refs really um, put away their whistles. I thought the Cole Perfetti, I thought, was tripped a couple times. 
Uh, they could have called something. The Jets did have a power play. They went over one. The Jets did not take a penalty. I couldn't believe this note, this stat from the Jets post game notes. That was their first time not taking a penalty since March 27, 2022. So two years, two years. Wow. Uh, a game without a penalty. Uh, that seems crazy uh, to me, but it's in the Jets game notes. Uh, mu- that must be true. It didn't say first time at home. I'm going to double check that, but um, that's pretty impressive. Uh, it most certainly is. Listen, yes, I first see time a lot no- of talk about the, about the pack. Listen, it's all on the line. We need, we absolutely <laughs> need a win on uh and listen, first and foremost, they needed a win last night just to get some positivity back in, feeling good about themselves. But for us, 0-3 right now on the season, there is there is no other alternative. Beat the Calgary Flames coming up on Thursday. Listen, we're gonna get to uh, get to some of the chats. You mentioned the refing though, Reem. Mm-hmm. I kind of joked that you know the refs were just taking a step back and making it all about the linesman last night. Um, because, of course, Ryan Galloway, Winnipeg native, lining his last game here in the city, um, he had a huge crew of supporters, fans, friends, family, relatives, all decked out in ref jerseys, which was amazing. And I have to tell you, I mean, I think you tweeted it out. I took a video of it at the end. Very, very cool and classy end of the game um, little presentation from Andre Kopitar, captain of the LA Kings. And that one went on a little while. The entire Jet team waited to thank Ryan and uh, congratulate him on uh, finishing up an amazing career in the National Hockey League. And... uh it ended up being, and you you could tell like when he got that uh, warm ovation from the crowd when they announced it in the third period, uh, he was tapping his heart right there and uh, thanking everyone there. It's a, I mean, listen, linesmen are often forgot about, but they're a very important part of the game. And uh, you know, to have the incredible career that Galloway did, being a local guy, you knew that was a really special night. I yeah, I'd never been to a game house where a official was given a standing ovation uh, like that. That was uh, that was pretty cool. And he had the big supporters group there, all decked out in uh, jerseys with his number on it. Um, yeah, it was cool seeing seeing Anze Kopitar give him a jersey and have a long conversation. Then each jet go down the line as well. Um, stuck around for a bit at the end and saw him go off the ice and embrace uh, some family members uh, at the exit. So, uh, I mean, he's been an official us over since 2002, 22 years, 52 years old from Winnipeg. Uh, how many games is that? Like, I forget what it is. Like 1,400, more than 1,400 games. That's a lot of games. Uh, so uh, congratulations to him on a great career. And that was a, that was a nice moment. Something that, you know, you go to a game and you don't see – um, every time, and I did enjoy the jerseys and uh, the jerseys and all the in-game entertainment. So it was definitely a, a unique experience there, uh, honoring Ryan Galloway last night. Yeah, no doubt. And how about the bugler too, Mary mm-hmm. Pierre? She She's had the, the the fans going on. It's kind of a nice little change up. Uh, obviously, wearing the uh, wearing the forty eights mm-hmm. last night. Um, all right, we're gonna get to some of the audio from the games in a minute, but I do want to shout out our friends over at Consolidated Supply who are ready to go for spring. Of course, Consolidated Supply is your go-to spot for, well, frankly, so many different things they can do for you. They're the leaders in irrigation systems. So if you have irrigation needs or planning irrigation projects, start with Consolidated Supply. Also, I mean, dealing with golf for so long, artificial turf, and golf carts, new and used. They're the club car exclusive club car dealer in Manitoba. Um, but they've also got other great options for your property, including hot tubs, amazing outdoor kitchens, and they are the leaders in small engine parts and repair. Now is a great time to start thinking about putting that dream backyard in, maybe a putting green, a hot tub, outdoor kitchen. Now we're talking. Consolidated's got you covered. Head on down and see them at their showroom, open to the public, 1395 Naqua Road East, or find out more online at CTE. 
uh, .ca. Um, Donnie and the gang are fired up and ready to go now with their second location open and running. And we've got some beautiful weather here, and that means it's time to get ready for spring and summer. Uh, heads up to you farmers, construction or landscaping companies. This is when you're getting your equipment ready to roll. Manitoba Battery has great deals that'll help you get up and running. Um, if you got half tons, those batteries are available for 75 to 80 bucks. Um, if you have big trucks that need a group 31 threaded post battery, those are now on for 80. Uh, and heck, we were just talking about golf carts. You need to pack up, you need to get those going. Six volt golf cart batteries for $129.50. There's only one place you can get your batteries locally for the best prices in town. That's Manitoba Battery. Now, two locations to serve you. Find out more about their spring sale online at manitobabattery.ca. Uh, I know we've been talking about the hats and the hat that I'm wearing. Kind of needed to because I've been putting off going and seeing Cordell and the gang down at Modern Man. That is changing on Friday, and it's a perfect time to do it because it's a big weekend at Modern Man Pemina, their one-year anniversary celebration. So uh, head on down there. You can make an appointment or pop down and see them. Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, I think there's going to be a wheel to spin if you get your hair cut at that point with some great prizes. All I can tell you, it is a great convenient spot along with the other eight Modern Man Barber Shop locations. Check them out, modernmanbarber.com to book your look. And uh, if you are in the neighborhood or planning on it, I would suggest pop down and see our friends at the Pemina location this weekend for their big event. And uh, just before we hear from Bones, I would, I would suggest that Bones may have finished his media last night, went back to the office, closed the door, and poured himself a Canadian club. Uh, that was a long couple of weeks for the head coach and for the hockey team. And uh, he was, I'm sure, quite deserving of uh, a little celebratory beverage afterwards. And hey, if you're thinking about whiskey, make it the best, make it Canada's favorite Canadian club. Of course, you can pick up Canadian Club and all the CC products from the family at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, getting a few CC and gingers as well out at Princess Auto Stadium coming up this year. All right, we're going to get into the... Um, Rivas, don't let me forget later on, though. I definitely want to... Well, actually, I'm going to put this out for the why not question of the day right now to people, and we'll discuss this later on. How many of you tuned in last night before the Jet game to the Iowa LSU women's, I guess, Elite Eight matchup in the Women's March Madness Tournament. I cannot remember as much excitement, hype, whatever you want to call it for a game, and oh my God, did that deliver. Caitlin Clark, legendary performance, legendary career, and it really does feel like this is in some ways a real turning point for women's sports, at least women's basketball. And uh, I'm waiting for these ratings to come out. The last time these teams played last year was 9.9 .9 million. I expect this one to probably pass 15, and it could be even more. Um, but anyways, we'll talk about it a little bit later on, but let us know in the chat. Why not question of the day? Did you tune in for that one? And uh, would love to get your feedback on it. All right, let's get back to the Jets, though. Before Mike comes on, uh, there was a coach that needed a win, a team that needed a win. They got it. Rick Bonus changed up the lines in a very significant fashion and then got the win last night. Here's Bones after the game on uh, the win and, uh, of course, the uh, look of his top six after changing everything up. Well, we got to a much-needed win, so very happy about that. Um, yeah, obviously the uh, Monaghan line had a big night for us. Um, that made the difference in the game. The deep pairings, yeah, that worked out okay. Cole Perfetti had to bide his time, and when you when he was put in, he was ready. What does that say about his maturity at 22? Well, he's been working really hard. Uh, the coach has been doing a lot, spent a lot of time with him. I did tell him, well, so when you get back in, we're going to give you more time with the top six because, you know, that's it's all, that's more his uh, game. So he took full advantage of him. Give him credit for that. Uh, Tyler goes down. He's ready to go. We put him in there, and he did a great job tonight. 
All right, so uh, there's Bones. And Remo, you could just hear the relief. Like, I, I think there was a lot of things about last night's game that Rick didn't love. Uh, I would suggest that he is very aware that there still is a number of levels for this team to get to before they start going up against Dallas or Colorado in the playoffs. That being said, there was some major relief about just getting a damn win and getting back in the win column. Yeah, you want to go and uh, feel good about your game. You want to feel good heading into the playoffs. But it was a good win, but they also got back um, to playing some defensive ho- hockey where there's some breakdowns. Yeah, but well, hey, they scored You know, they scored more than the other team, and I think that was, that was what they needed. They needed to feel good about their game. And, uh, you know, people asking for any other post-game updates, you know, lines today, again, they're, they're off today, so we'll, we'll know more. Tomorrow, so you get a win, get a day off, and uh, get back at it tomorrow before Thursday's game. Yeah, Thursday uh, at home and then off to Minneapolis to take on the Wild to St. Paul, I guess, technically, um, to uh, begin that four-game gauntlet through uh, the Central Division. Well, very happy with Cole Perfetti's performance last night. Uh, and, and, you know, we should mention the Adam Lowry line was awesome last night. They were everywhere. They didn't score, but they in so many ways set the tone, spent a ton of time in the Kings end, and kind of softened up the Kings for the Monaghan line to come out and do some damage. I thought they had a great game, but uh, there was a lot of eyes on Kyle Connor for obvious reasons. He moved from the top line to Monaghan's line along with Cole Perfetti, ended up popping three assists last night, was one of the three stars. And, um, you know, even, you know, uh, listen, uh, there were some defensive moments for that line as well. They did give up a couple, um, but certainly was playing with a lot more life than I think we've seen lately. Here's what Bones had to say about KFC. That's him. You know, just the way he uses his skating ability and puck handling and his vision. He's cutting back. He's tough to defend when he gets going like that. Uh, and he hung on to the puck longer tonight to make those plays. He wasn't in a hurry to get rid of it. And uh, he was feeling it. You could tell. So uh, good to see. Does he kind of like when he gets into that man-on-man coverage? Like, he's just circling top of the zone, and, like, it looks like he's making space for everybody. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is. Because you get tired chasing him around. But he's a great elite skater. So, um, yeah, he, he looked good. All right, so there's uh, Bones on Kyle Connor. Um, you know, we'll get back to more on the forwards. But here's a quick update on Nito Niederreiter and why we didn't see him in the final 12 minutes of the third period. Well, can you tell us about Nino Niederreiter, Rick? And I left him. Uh, he required some stitches on his leg. So. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you think he'll be okay for Thursday? Or? We'll know more after tomorrow and Wednesday. We'll see. All right. So there's the Nino update. Nothing more we can tell you today. We'll wait to hear more word on uh, number 62 tomorrow. Um, one of the things that Bones had to like was the way his team did not wilt when they gave up goals and the way they came back on a couple of times past deficits. Of course, won it in the third period. Here's Bones on uh, the resiliency of the club. It was good. I mean, it was, you know, they got a, uh, I thought it was a hard-fought game. That's an excellent team over there. They're battling for their for their playoffs positioning as well. So that was a hard-fought game. They were on top of us at times. We were on top of them at times. It was a pretty even game. And uh, uh, But, yeah, it was good to see us, you know, I know we uh, we had to keep <laughs> tying it up a little. But uh, there was a lot of fight in our group tonight, for sure. I mean, no one wants to go through a long losing streak late in the year. I mean, what does this do for your team's mental approach for the last uh, seven? Uh, you know, so we just get ready for Calgary on Thursday. Um, you know, one of the things that Bones and the coaching staff has been talking over and over again is about getting back to, quote unquote, their game. Um, and I thought there were certainly steps taken uh, in that um, category last night. Here's what Bones had to say about, uh, you know, getting back, trending positively um, and performing better defensively than they had been as of late. It was much closer. Like some of those high slot areas, they, they made good plays. They, they did. Uh, but for the most part, we protected the net, the guts of the ice much better. Uh, you know, they were using the width of the ice very quickly, especially on that first goal. It goes up and you hit a guy flying down that far side. You, you, you were willing to give up those shots. It was a perfect shot. So some of the things we uh, we did better tonight defensively, but we'll keep working on it because we're not we're not quite where we need to be. You know, and, uh, and speaking of that, um, the defensive uh, metrics, Goals against, uh, the Jets are back 
in the number one spot for the Jennings Trophy. One goal less allowed than the Florida Panthers, Remus. The Jets have 187 through 75 games. The Panthers giving up a half does last night to the Leafs. Now 188 on the season. And uh, it's going to be a seven-game competition between these two clubs, and the Jets are up a goal. Yeah, Florida in action tonight against uh, Mon- against Montreal. And, yeah, I mean, they get they've, Toronto put up a bunch on them yesterday. It's, you know, kind of lost in the losing streak. We weren't really keeping track of this as much. We're like, hey, let's just try to win. Yeah, uh, get, get, get let's try to get a win. Yeah, try to get a win. But, yeah, they're one up on Florida. <laughs> so Jennings watch back on. And we'll keep an eye on Florida tonight. Vancouver, L.A., they're kind of lurking there. They got to, you know. Jets and Florida got a 10-goal lead on those two teams, but that will be nice to get some more hardware uh, for the Winnipeg Jets with uh, the Jennings Trophy for fewest goals against. It would be awesome. Well, and, you know, listen, we talked about LB. It wasn't his best game last night, but he's been so good all season long. I mean, both he and Connor Hellebuck certainly deserving of that. If they can get the team across the finish line, seven games to go on that. Um, But most of the conversations were around the new look of the forward group and the performance of Cole Perfetti in for a sick Tyler Toffoli. Uh, Rennie got into the mix afterwards, and the truth teller asked Bones about uh, now increased competition at forward and in the top six. Do you find maybe <laughs> areas of competition now that didn't ex- exist before that you kind of have to you know, let roll now as a coach because some players have elbowed their way into the conversation? Well, they have, and that's what you want. Uh, that's why we made some changes. We had to change it up. Six in a row was enough, so we made some changes. And now it's going to be a battle for ice time. So to, to that point, I know with your forwards, typically it's been a battle for the 12th forward, and that's where Cole has found himself. Would there maybe be a potential now for a two-tier kind of competition system where there's there's competition to get into that top six and then competition to get into that bottom six, almost like two separate races? Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the lineup looks like on Thursday. <laughs> you that's, know I'm not That didn't answer. sound like much of an answer, but I'll... <laughs> You know, a valiant effort by Sean. Uh, Bones, I think, just wanted to get back to the locker room and toast a victory and uh, move on to preparing for the Calgary Flames. Um, One other bit, and we talked about this before, pretty special moment for local guy Ryan Galloway. Uh, Bones just mentioned his post-game conversation with Ryan after the jerseys were presented to the longtime NHL linesman. Tell them, uh, I don't know if I was there for your very first game, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very happy to be there for his last. Obviously, I was, I was here for his whole career. And I think any time a referee leaves and he has the full respect of the players and the full respect of the coaches around the league, you know he's had a great career. So I'm very happy for him. I was wondering if you could dig into that a little deeper. Just explain to you know people who don't see the insides of the game, why you would see the show of respect that we saw with Ryan, both with L.A. and your players yourself. Just the way he's uh, he treats the players, he talks to the players, he talks to the coaches, he's approachable. Uh, he was very consistent with his calling. Um, he, he, like, he, you knew exactly what you're, you're going to get a really good game from Ryan Cal. Yeah, he, he was very consistent. He, he kept himself at a very high level every game. All right, so there's what Bones had to say after the streak-breaking win for his Winnipeg Jets last night. But the star of the show, the first star, as selected by you-know-who, was Cole Perfetti. Two goals, one assist, opened the scoring, scored the game winner in the third period. Had to be a huge boost for his confidence. Here's Cole on that. Yeah, I think, obviously, I, oh, it was huge for my confidence. Um, just, you know getting put in, a, in that chance and and then obviously going to the net and, and just banging one early in is is um you know that felt great and then um you know we, we created lots of lines scored lots of lines so I think um it just felt really good it, it was you know just really happy that I could contribute and and help you know get back into that um you know I missed that for a little bit so it just feels really good to to get back and, and help this team win he was apparently quite excited in between periods, uh, between one and two as well, Reem. Yeah, I mean, I would be excited too if you're out and you go back in, you score a goal. Um, and maybe it's hard to turn off, but yes, uh, Perfetti dropping 
an F bomb, everyone alerting us uh, about it. And I think it wasn't the, you know, was, you know, dropping the foul language itself, but his reaction after realizing uh, that he did it. Hold on, where's, we want me to pull up the screenshot of his face? Yeah. Oh, that would be wonderful. The, uh, <laughs> oh, the, here in the Jets tweeting a Cole frickin' Perfetti uh, for the winner. <laughs> Listen, the Jets social media team's been amazing this year. They have, here, they have some I'll, fun with stuff. Let me find it. I'll find it after. Hold on. Uh, All right. Well, here, let's, you know, let's play. Uh, this is Perfetti on, uh, you know, being ready, needing to be ready, but taking advantage of that opportunity that was presented to him last night with Tafoli out of the lineup. Yeah, um, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't easy. Like, it's been tough the last little bit, but just trying to come to work every day with a positive mindset, be a good teammate, and if an opportunity presents itself, just be ready. And um, an opportunity came tonight, and, and you know, just tried whatever I could to, to seize the moment. And um, I was just, you know, the last 25 games has been, obviously, it's been a roller coaster. So just being... Um, like I said, just being ready at all times and then just trying to stay engaged and stay focused, you know, in the practices and um, just trying to be the best that I can be. And, and um, yeah, tonight we felt really good. All right, a uh, little more from Cole Perfetti. And, uh, and listen, I, I think, you know, in the last month or so when he has been in the lineup, you know, he's been doing it in a more diminished role alongside, um, you know, some of the other guys on the fourth line. This was different last night. You're going in on a new line put together. Kyle Connor on your on the left side, Sean Monahan in the middle. Cole made the most of it, but uh, talked about his line mates and playing with the 81 and 23 last night. Well, yeah, you play with Monty and, and KC. They're obviously they've been around for a while. They got a lot of skill. They are fantastic players. So I told them before the game, I'm gonna be a little like be simple. Um, I'm not gonna try to overdo things. Gonna go to the net and try to open some ice up for you and let you guys make some plays and um you know it worked so we created lots and and scored a lot so it was uh yeah just trying to you know play my game but also just be a smart player and then and you know show that i can be reliable and, and whatnot so um that was good yeah big smile from perfetti last night uh um, remo let's see this picture of uh of perfetti last night during his uh first period interview yeah shout out to uh, Neville Peppermint on YouTube on Twitter uh, on where is it here? I'll I'll mute it though so we don't have to hear hear at us. We, our ears are not right for that. But uh, you know, and where is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of like or he just realizes Whoops. there we're not in the locker room. We're on uh, we're on TV with the uh, TSN. So a uh, fun moment at home for everyone. I think we've no, all good. heard. Well, heard the F word before. Yeah, it has happened. Great, great. <laughs> that's hilarious. That, that's meme worthy. Uh, absolutely. Um, here's Perfetti though on on Kyle Connor's game. Obviously, three assists for eighty one. A big, big uh, bounce back for him after a real rough run as of late. Yeah, I mean, he was making plays. I mean, the one, the one where Monty scored. He was uh, circling around up top for it felt like forever. Um, just making guys miss and that's what he can do with his speed and skill um guys have to respect that and, and he can take advantage of it and then obviously the one on uh on jmo's goal um to buy time for me to get behind their d and and then make that little soft sauce pass like that's a pretty high-end play so um yeah he was really good tonight and created lots and um he can do those special things all right, a little bit more from Cole Perfetti. Now we're going to talk about all of this, look ahead to the Calgary game, how things might look with Mike McIntyre. Just before we bring in Mike, though, here's one more from Cole on uh, when he knew he was a go for tomorrow for last night's game, um, considering the uncertainty of Toffoli's availability. I mean, kind of going home from morning skate, I had a pretty good idea that, you know, Toff was sick and under the weather. and um, So I didn't know 100%, but I prepared as if I was playing, came to the rink. And when I got here, obviously he wasn't here. He's, I think he's, he's pretty sick. So, um, yeah, I just went about it as if I was a normal game day and lucky enough it was, I was in. So it was good. We're not just for the showboats or the champions. We're here for the good ones. The ones who work hard. 
and show up for others not to get recognized, but because it's the right thing to do. We'd like to think that our good intentions show up in our beer. We keep working to perfect it, not because we want fame or fanfare, but because you deserve it. 1919, the good you deserve. Yes, there were some few celebratory generics enjoyed last night, I think, at the end of that game and afterwards, even with the 8 p.m. start on a Monday. Um, listen, we're going to bring Mike McIntyre in just a second. I uh, do want to thank our friends at Wallace and Wallace for their great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. And, of course, spring is here. And you know what that means, gang? Uh, getting ready for those projects that you've been thinking about all summer long. And, of course, when you're thinking fencing, you think Wallace and Wallace, the experts in fencing here in Winnipeg in the province since 1946. Now, in very short order, we're going to be seeing those fences and uh, trucks all over the city. Right now, Wallace and Wallace is already booking and expect to be starting installations towards the end of this month. Right now, if you book by April 15th, Wallace and Wallace can guarantee a May installation date so you can enjoy an entire summer on your side of a brand new fence. Don't wait and end up at the back of the line for a new fence. Call Wallace and Wallace today, 452-2700. And of course, the Wallace and Wallace team will come and arrange a time to give you a free estimate and everything you need to know about that new fence. Um, speaking of new Many of you are looking ahead to the calendar, looking forward to spring and summer, and realize uh, it might be time to see the fellas at F Apparel about a bit of an upgrade in the menswear department, especially with wedding season coming up. Guys, if you need to up your menswear game heading into spring and summer, get to F Apparel. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. 15% discount. For wedding parties, when you get your suits at F Apparel and other great promos, including one for young high school grads. You can find out more online at F, that's E-P-H, apparel.com, or pop down and see them at 190 Smith Street. And hey, shout out to our friends at Aikens Lake. They're getting ready for another big summer. Booking right now well into June, or sorry, July and August at AikensLake.com. I do have an availability. I believe it's still there for Father's Day weekend. Um, other than that, most of May and June completely booked up. But if you are thinking about maybe an amazing father-son trip, um, talk to the folks at Aikens about that availability. And don't forget, if there's a young fishing enthusiast in the family looking for a one-of-a-kind summer job on the water in paradise, send those resumes in to AikensLake.com. Talk to Pitt. And uh, maybe we'll be seeing uh, that guy out at some point this season. All right, let's get Mike McIntyre in here. Mike, a collective sigh of relief after yesterday. Uh, you sort of felt that from Rick Bone. There's still lots of work to be done for this team. But, man, this team needed a win. This fan base needed a win, and they got it last night. Yeah, they sure did. Uh, and against a, an L.A. team that, you know, Huss, we, we talk about the Jets taking on some desperate opponents recently. I think you can put L.A. in that category. Uh, just look at – they've only got a three-point buffer right now on a playoff spot. Um, and this is a team that I think a lot of folks had pegged as a Stanley Cup favorite, uh, certainly a contender when the year began. Uh, L.A. got off to a great start, but they have really hit some hard times. And all of a sudden, the Blues, after they beat the Oilers last night, they're within three points. So this was not an L.A. team just going through the motions or a, a, a team that doesn't have anything to play for. This is an L.A. team that, you know, going into that third period, Huss, they they needed two points. And, you know, I think we can pick apart parts of the Jets game for sure um, where there's room for improvement. I thought they were really good in that third period. Um, Loren Brassois, who I thought was really fighting the puck and his own net at times early in the game. Uh, and we're not used to seeing that from Brassois. I thought he really stood tall in the third period. I think LA had 11 shots and he stopped them all. A couple of big saves there. A little bit of luck maybe as well if Trevor Moore doesn't put that shorthanded breakaway over the net, uh, which of course, Jets come right back down and, and get the game winner. 
Uh, but you got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good, right? Uh, and the Jets, as you say, they absolutely needed that. And I would say nobody needed it more than Cole Perfetti, who, of course, was the story of the game. It's one of those great stories in sports. It writes itself, right? A guy who probably wasn't even going to play uh, if Tyler Toffoli doesn't uh, wake up feeling uh, bluish. And, you know, a kid who um clearly has is is battling you know some confidence issues and trust issues with the coach because he's been making them a healthy scratch you know in Cole Perfetti in 60 minutes um equals his point production uh I just did the math I believe it was over his previous 26 games dating all the way back to January 9th so in in 60 minutes three periods uh, he put up the same number of points he'd had since the beginning of January over 26 games. And uh, now it's perhaps created a, a really interesting flash good problem for the Winnipeg Jets as they uh, look forward to Calgary on Thursday night. You know, uh, uh, we'll get to all the Jets moments. You just mentioned L.A.'s situation. I'm looking at the standings here. Huh. And you're right. I mean, they're three points up on the Blues. And uh, listen, I'll hand up I'm guilty I completely wrote them off after Saturday but looking at where the Blues are right now it makes that no show at home against the Sharks even more uh, unforgivable yeah Yeah. incredible last night against Edmonton yeah would they lose was it us would they lose three nothing four zip four zip yeah (laughs) to to you know the worst team in the NHL um you're right that that seemed to be the nail in the coffin. And then they come back and, and beat the Oilers. So hard hard to know what to make of St. Louis. But yeah, I mean, if they had beaten the Sharks, all of a sudden they're one point behind. The Kings do have a game in hand. Um, I think LA's next two games, Haas, I think they're against Seattle and Anaheim. Um, maybe wrong on that. I, I looked last night. But in any event, I mean, the Kings are still in the driver's seat, but they don't have the... They don't have quite the room to play with that they did uh, a little while ago. So, yeah, I mean, they, they were a team that uh, they needed those two points. And to the Jets' credit, um, you know, I thought as the game went on last night, I thought the Jets were the better club. We've seen a lot of games, even lately, Haas, though, where the Jets have played well and they don't get the results. Like, I'm sure there were a lot of fans last night that were just bracing for the heartbreak hotel to hit once again. And I mean, when Trevor Moore, you know, there's no penalties in the game. First penalty gets called, gets go to the power play, a chance for special teams to finally win a game. And then the Kings get a shorthanded break when you're like, Oh my God, they're going to, they're going to lose another game on special teams. Uh, Trevor Moore puts that shot high and wide. And about 10 seconds later, just as the power play had expired, Cole Perfetti rips his second of the game and uh, and then the Jets hang on. And, you know, re- they really locked it down after they took that lead, Huss. Um, you know, you're expecting a big push from the Kings. And, you know, I thought the Jets really controlled the play. Credit to the Shifley line. They went out and had a really good shift late in that third where they kind of pinned L.A. in. L.A. couldn't really get organized, you know, to get the goalie pulled and set up in Winnipeg's end. It was a quiet night for that top line statistically. Uh, but certainly if you look at zone time, possession, um, you know, a good night for the Shifley, Ehlers, Velarde trio. And, of course, the the new look second line, at least for one night, with Cole Perfetti beside Monaghan and Connor. Like, those guys really clicked. Obviously, Monaghan with the big goal, Connor the three assists, and Cole Perfetti with uh, the two goals and, and, the, and the helper. So, you know, the Jets, they, they got the result they needed. Um is are are they going to make a push for home ice advantage with seven games left? Probably not. It kind of feels like that ship has sailed. Although Colorado did lose last night. You talk about puzzling results when you talk about St. Louis, San Jose. How about the Avalanche losing to the not-so-mighty Blue Jackets uh, last night? So all of a sudden, Colorado's still within range if we're talking about trying to get into second and starting a series at home, the Jets do play the Avalanche. Obviously, that's going to be that could be a very big game. Um, so, I mean, it's not out of the equation. I think the other thing is the Jets now they put six points between themselves and the Preds, who all of a sudden have lost two straight games, uh, and it's looking more and more likely that 
locking in third place is where the Jets are going to finish with an outside chance maybe at second. Dallas is seven up with seven to go. I know they have the one head-to-head still. That's a lot of ground to try and make up in a short time. Winning the division would now seem to be a complete long shot. But more than anything, Huss, it's it's the process almost more than the results. The Jets need to get their game back where it needs to be uh, over these last now seven games. And last night was certainly a, a step in the right direction. Yeah, uh, um, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go. At, you know, we should mention the Lowry line too. I, I thought they were great all night last night. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they really established – some possession, some time control in other ends, in some ways sort of softened up the Kings for that second line to go out. And uh, I thought the fourth line played well uh, for the most part as well. But, of course, the the big questions were, how is this team going to look with these new-look lines? And we'll get back to Perfetti and Connor in that group in a minute, Mike. Um, it wasn't quite just uh, the magic potion of putting Velarde Ehlers together with Shifley the way they had done so well in the past – and taking over a game, it was uh, it was a struggle at times with those players. Yep. But we did see, I think we did see some of the good that everyone knows is there in that group. And you know, obviously, the other side of that is Kyle Connor moving to the Monahan line. I think with a lot of pressure on him that you know, you know, for a long times he had sort of been as much as you can be in the shadows on the top line, yep. playing with Mark Scheifele. There's been a lot of attention on him, his game, what hasn't been going right, and this was not a perfect game by any stretch. But we saw a lot of the good that Kyle Connor can do, not just scoring goals but setting them up, and he was a really, really impactful player and a big part of that win. Well, and I think an important development here, Huss, is something that I've been banging the drum on for a while. I know others have as well. I've said it on your show here. I've written it in the free press. Uh, and that is, I, I wanted to see what Kyle Connor looks like with Sean, <clears throat> Sean Monaghan as his center. We, we have all kinds of, of evidence piled up, not just from this year, but from many years, of Shifley and Connor. Uh, we've seen that. Paul Maurice had them together. Dave Lowry had them together. Rick Bonus has had them together. Um, and certainly, you know, there's a lot of debate about the pros and cons of, of 81 and 55 together. What we really haven't seen, and, you know, Sean Monaghan was acquired a month before the trade deadline. He's been a Jet since early February. Here we are now in early April, almost two months later, and we've barely seen Kyle Connor and Sean Monaghan together. And I, I, I think even if even if you don't ultimately keep those guys together long term, and I'm talking about into the playoffs, you had you have to get some look at them here during the regular season because all kinds of things can happen. You know, someone gets hurt. As we just saw, you have to move some pieces around. The team's not playing well. You're trying to find a spark. So, you know, I, I like the the move not only because we've seen Velarde Shifley Ehlers you know we saw them put together early in the season and have a terrific game coincidentally Haas I believe it was that game in LA arguably one of the Jets best games of the year where that line really came together this is after Velarde had just come back from his injury I think they scored all five goals that night and they went on and had a real nice run and then they were broken up when Kyle Connor came back so I like not only what it means for the top line, but I like getting to see Monaghan and Connor. And those two certainly you know, came together on a really nice goal, the Monaghan goal yesterday. Um, and Cole Perfetti seemed to be a real nice complimentary piece there, putting him in a role that, let's face it, even when he's been in the lineup lately, Huss, he's playing primarily on a fourth line role. His minutes, he's not. he's barely getting 10 minutes a game. So you put a skilled offensive player with two other skilled offensive player, players and good things can happen. And we saw that last night. Um, and so if I'm Rick Bonus, uh, I'm leaving Connor and Monaghan together here uh, for the foreseeable future. They got seven games left. Let them let them have a bit of a run here well, uh, to see, see what that looks like. Well, you said I'm leaving Connor and Monaghan together. You did not mention Perfetti. What becomes of number 91 uh, when they practice tomorrow, assuming Toffoli's back on, on Thursday? Yeah, it's the most interesting question for sure. Um, first of all, you can't take Cole Perfetti out of the lineup now on Thursday. You just can't. 
that would be that would be the the worst possible message not only to send to a young player to the whole team you just won the first time in seven games Cole Perfetti had a huge piece of it you can't healthy scratch him um I also believe Huss you leave him where he is uh, and you find another spot for Tyler Toffoli, assuming Tyler Toffoli is, uh, has shaken off his bug by Thursday and can play. And, you know, to me, and I know you, you said the third line was really good. They were last night, but there's a couple of things at play here. First of all, we don't totally know what Nino Niederreiter's status is. We know he suffered a, a, a skate cut to the leg, got stitches. Um, the Jets are off today, so we won't get an update on him. Let's just assume that Nino Niederreiter is good to go on Thursday as well. You know, I think I would put Tyler Toffoli in Mason Appleton's spot. And I know Rick Bonus loves that third line, and Mason Appleton is obviously a key part of it. I just think Tyler Toffoli would give that line a little more pop, make them a little more dangerous. I think I'm not saying you take Mason App- Appleton out of the lineup. He would slide down, whether that means Alex Iafalo comes out, or Morgan Barron. Uh, I don't think you're taking Vlad Nemestikov out. He's too versatile and valuable. But again, these are good problems to have. Um, the Jets have 13 forwards right now in double digits in goals. Cole Perfetti is one of them. And in fact, he's up to 17. He's among your better goal scorers. And yes, he hadn't scored in a long time, but he's coming off a two-goal game. He's feeling it. you got to leave him in there. And you've got to leave him in a position to succeed not just throw him back down to the fourth line where he's maybe going to play six or seven minutes and not get the same opportunities. Um, this is a results-oriented business, and the results from last night were pretty good. So I'm leaving Cole Perfetti with Sean Monahan and Kyle Connor Thursday night. If, if everyone's good to go, including Tyler Toffoli, I'm probably putting him on the third line with Niederreiter Lowry. I'm moving Appleton down, seeing what that looks like. Again, these are not, you know, elimination games for the Jets now at this point. Obviously, you want good results, but you have, you've built up some some buffer here. You have a little bit of room for experimentation. I think now's the time to do it. You know, it, it, it's funny you bring that up. I had a conversation with a couple of guys afterwards on this exact topic after the game last night, and I, I do wonder about the fit of Toffoli on that third line. Like, the the thing that Appleton brings, I mean, he is he's such a great four-checker. He's got speed, um, and he's got a real level of chemistry when it comes to cycling the puck and all that. And I'm not sure, like, Toffoli's sort of a guy that sometimes he looks a little slow, but he is brilliant with finding open ice and, you know, being able to create from that point. The style, I'm not sure that there's not a stylistic clash in that. And listen, if it comes out that you ease him back into the lineup playing on the fourth line, I think there could be some benefits there as well. I, I, to me, though, Alex Iafello is not going anywhere. I mean, especially as long as he's first over the boards with Adam Lowry when it comes to killing penalties, okay, although they sure. didn't have to do that last night. No, that's a good way to... Uh... That's a good way to battle your own woeful penalty kill is to just not take any penalties. Uh, Jets had that clean sheet in that. The refs were making it about the linesman last night. You're right. I mean, Morgan Barron um, has been a healthy scratch, I think a couple games earlier in the year. So he's probably the guy that is, you know, the most bubble, although Morgan Barron kills penalties as well. Hey, and- if you had asked me this question after su- after Saturday against Ottawa, it would have been Nemetsnikov. He had a brutal game, did, two penalties yeah. early on. It just seemed off sorts. But if we're talking about the body of work of this entire season, he's been a very important player, a very versatile player. And, of course, one that, I mean, we talk about him playing center, but, I mean, he can't win a faceoff. So, I mean, that's oh. I, I don't think that would be a big loss if they were putting Baron or somebody else in the middle to take the draws. Well, and Baron has taken – Vlad Domestikov still, I believe, has this thumb issue, whatever it is. Uh, we – Probably won't find out the full scope of it till after the season. And again, if we're talking about, you know, load management or whatever, cycling guys in, like, so maybe everybody takes a turn on that fourth line, Nemestikov, Baron, you know, sitting out a game here or there. Again, I think, obviously, you got to keep your eye on the prize here. And, and you know, winning is is right now the most important thing for the Jets, getting their game where it needs to be. But I think you've got to try and and keep things going here with Cole Perfetti, 
Um, you know, this is a guy who's he's been waiting for an opportunity. He's been waiting for something to go well. And we just saw that happen in a significant way last night. Um, to me, it would be foolish to now do anything to alter that uh, trajectory. And whether he can sustain it beyond, you know, one really good game last night, we'll see. But I think he's got to be given the opportunity to do so. You know, Mike, um, the the one thing I will say as far as, and, and who knows, this might be forced, depending on what the story with Nino is after uh, the stitches is leaving right. the game last night. But I will say this, knowing where the Jets are in the playoffs, well, not officially yet, but that'll happen any day. Yep. Uh, with seven games left in the season, knowing what is to come, the one line that has basically been untouched all year has been Lowry's line. And you never know what may happen in the playoffs. Like if there was ever a time to get a look at a couple of different combinations, right. not even intending on starting things out that way, right now would be it. I mean, I've got time for Tyler Toffoli in your conversation, although I'm not totally sure how it looks, and he has skated with them a little bit before. I'm shocked that we haven't seen Alex Iafallo on that line at some point this year. Yeah. I mean, to me, at the beginning of the year, I really thought that we would end up with Lowry, Niederreiter, and Iafallo, which could be, at least on paper, maybe the best version of that line we've seen in a long time. But Appleton, to his credit, has done everything that's been asked of him. He's had a career year. He's got 13 goals. He's got over 30 points. He's played at a level. I know he takes some shots from the odd fan, but he's done nothing to get himself off of that line. All that being said, it might not be a bad thing to look. And listen, if Perfetti's going to be in there, you're going to see if they can get him a chance. Getting some guys that have played every night all season long, one day off, I don't think is a big deal. No, and, and you know, we did see Haas for... Two and a half periods, just over a week ago, we saw Lowry, Niederreiter, Toffoli. Folks may be saying we did. Well, yep. I take you back to Long Island, and the Jets were getting absolutely caved in against the Islanders. What were they down? 6-1 through two periods there, um, uh, just over a week and a, and a half ago. And Scott O'Neill, who was running the bench at the time because Rick Bonus was uh, – was still out with his medical issue. Uh, he shook everything up in the third period. He, and he put Lowry, Niederreiter, Toffoli together. Those guys had a great third period. All the lines did. Um, they also uh, started the next game against the Capitals with those very lines. Mason Appleton had moved up to play with Shifley and Ehlers because Gabe Velarde was not back in the lineup just yet. And they had Monaghan, Connor, and Nemestikov, Perfetti was in the lineup. He was with Baron and Iafalo, and he scored against the Islanders. Uh, and if you remember, the Jets started off that game, a game against the Capitals really strong as well. But midway through the second period, 0-0 game, uh, Scott O'Neill shuffled the lines again, and the Jets ultimately lost that game 3 nothing. So I liked the little tiny sample size we saw of Lowry, Niederreiter, Toffoli. Uh, but I agree, we haven't seen Ayafalo there, and you talked about Mason Appleton being such a good complimentary piece to Lowry and Niederreiter. Um, Alex Ayafalo has a lot of the very same qualities that Mason Appleton does. Here's my thing on Niederreiter, though, us. Like, I, I like, obviously, what that line does. I just feel like Niederreiter has a little more offense that's maybe it, it, it's getting blocked a bit by who his line mates are. No, and this is not a dig at all at Adam Lowry and Mason Appleton. I just wonder if you had Niederreiter and Toffoli as the wingers and Lowry up the middle, if there's not a little more offense. Like Niederreiter's, what, at 18 goals? But if you look, like he's really gone pretty cold on the goal scoring department here over the last couple months. The majority of his goals were earlier in the year. Um, I just wonder if you could unlock, I mean, Rick Bonus talks about wanting two scoring lines. Hey, if you could get a third line that's scoring as well, but also able to to check the heck out of the opposition, uh, more power to you. So you're right. There's time for some experimentation, some different looks, and Cole Perfetti having the kind of game he did last night, I think potentially opens the door. Play around a little bit with what you have, and the the end goal should be that you know in two and a half weeks from now, when the regular season ends and the playoffs begin. 
you have a really good idea of, you know, who's going, who's not going, <laughs> and what are our optimal lines to kind of start game one of the playoffs with. You know, I, I have to laugh. You brought up that game on Long Island with that uh, the disaster. Arnie shift, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, shifted up all the lines. He had to do something. I mean, they were getting embarrassed. And the one thing I'll say is, I mean, everything looked good in the third period because of just how bad it was at the start. But I mean, that period. I mean, Toffoli had come off those big games against some of the lower teams. He had a couple yep. goals in back-to-back -back games really from the New Jersey game through until most of the Washington game, I thought he looked like he was skating around with a 25 pound bag of sand in his pants. Like it was just, and I mean, who knows, maybe he's been dealing with something that led to him finally being out of the lineup yesterday. Right. Um, we know that the flu has been going through this locker room for the better part of the last month plus. Um, but he just did not look himself at that point. And, I don't know how much we can sort of take from it. But, I mean, I guess the point is that there are options right now. Rick Bonus had to go to his nuclear option, if you will, splitting up 81 and 55. And now, with the results last night of the second line, I would imagine they're going to give a few more games for, you know, Gabe and, and Nick uh, to play alongside Mark Shifley and see what happens. I mean, now would be the time. Like, first things first, they needed to get a win. They needed to calm the temperature around the team. Yeah. But there is definitely some opportunities moving forward um, with it. It's, while we're talking about changes, what did you think blue about line. the blue line yeah. pairings last night? Because everything went in the blender last night, and those pairings have been pretty solid and consistent for most of the season. So here's what I liked about the pairings. And I know there were a lot of people losing their minds about uh, Neil Pionk seemingly getting promoted at a time when why, he's... Why do you think they did that? Because there was a two stra strains of thought. Maybe you move him down to the yeah. third pairing and a little less, or try to bring the best out of him and have their best defenseman on the ice with him to try to get him out of his funk. That's exactly what they did. I mean, whether you agree with it or not, if you're going to keep him in the lineup, and I've said, wrote in our newsletter the other day, if I was coaching, I would pull Pionk into that D rotation and give him a game or two off. Um, he looks like he could use it. But if you're going to put him in the lineup, which clearly they are keeping him in the lineup here, then you got to try and find a way to bring out the best in him. And so putting him with your best defenseman, and that's Josh Morrissey without question, um, that's exactly what they were trying to do. And, you know, an interesting offshoot, like if you look at the way they matched up, and they were the home team last night, so they had last change. Rick Bonus could control the matchups. Putting Dylan Sandberg and Dylan DeMello together, two very defensive-minded, shutdown type D, right? Rick Bonus had those pair, and when he did this in the morning skate, this was my first thought: is well, that duo, they're going to see a lot of the Kopitar Kempi line, and they did, and. That kind of freed Bianca and Morrissey up for some softer matchups. Like, there were lots of times last night, Huss, they had Morrissey and Pionk out there against LA's fourth line. Um, and they weren't up against the, the top line a whole lot. And so, you know, I think that's that's a thing that, that Rick Bonus was looking at. And... You know, is this going to last long term? Probably not. Again, as he said in the morning, enough's enough. We've lost six in a row. We can't just do the status quo here. Uh, so I didn't mind those moves at all. And, you know, I think for one night anyways, they had the desired effect. Now, if you're on the road, you don't get last change. Do you want Morrissey and Pionk together all the time? Like that's obviously that's a very offensive minded tandem. You know, we've seen that duo before in, in games where the Jets are chasing the game in the third and Rick Bonus will go to them. Uh, Paul Maurice used to do that as well. I'm not sure that, you know, if let's just say you're playing the Colorado Avalanche in the first round. I don't know that you want Morrison Pionk as a regular pairing and Jared Bednar is able to get who he wants out against those guys because I think you open yourselves up maybe to a little more degree of risk than you do when you have Morrissey, DeMello, and Dylan and Pionk. You kind of have those defensive anchors to help out the, you know, balance the offensive player. But last night, last change, 
a really heavy first line that the Kings have, the ability to match. Uh, I like the moves. And, you know, I think, again, this is all part of trying to get guys feeling a little more comfortable because let's face it, you lose six in a row. There wasn't a lot of comfort. Uh, I was at the morning skate yesterday, Huss. That was a pretty quiet. um, The joy level was very low. You could tell that this was wearing on the guys and uh, they needed a positive result. They got it. And now they can obviously focus on, on the road ahead here. Well, you know what? And while we're talking about the blue line, um, you know, it's funny. Dylan DeMello is just such a calming presence. I mean, Dylan Sandberg looked really comfortable playing with him last night. Yeah. And I had a lot of time for uh, what Nate Schmidt and Brendan Dillon did together. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll see. The one thing, and if you had told me, Mike, six weeks ago that I would be saying this on the show, I would have said you were crazy. But Logan Stanley is very much in the picture to be playing come playoff yes. time as well as in the last seven games. Listen, I know he's got plenty of critics and detractors. Um, he has been given plenty of opportunities in the past that I don't think he did much with them. Different story his last time in the uh, in the lineup. And whether you're talking about the physicality, a little bit more confidence, playing with a bit more of a mean streak, this is exactly what they wanted from him. This is how he's going to stay in the lineup. And, I mean, the, the reemergence of Stan in the conversation is something I didn't think we'd be talking about, but I think we have to. I, I agree. And, you know, I think he's also, you know, moving better. Like, he's never going to blow you away, obviously, with his speed. But I think his foot speed um, is something that he has worked on. And, and you know, he's had a lot of time to work on it, obviously, after practice. You know, uh, he's the guy out there often doing the, the extra skating and whatnot. But, you know, I think his skating is better. And he's getting around the ice a little more. He's He's not maybe caught out of position the way he was obviously with his size you know he has a very good active stick and you know we've seen him break up some plays just with the range that he has uh he also has a good accurate low shot um you know he can keep that shot low get some pucks towards the net create some chaos but yeah the physicality is obviously a big part of it and what will be interesting to see Haas I agree that he's very much in the equation to play in the playoffs it may be matchup dependent, like depend depending on who the Jets are facing. If they're playing a, a more a bigger, heavier team like a Dallas, like a Vegas, um, like a Nashville, you know, depending on what that matchup looks like, I think there would absolutely be a spot uh, for him. If if they're playing a team that maybe doesn't have the same physicality, a little more finesse. A, a more of a skilled, you know, puck moving rush team like a Colorado. Does he get in right off the hop? Maybe not. Um, but he obviously brings some elements that the Jets are, they don't have a whole lot of. And yeah, I think his play recently has opened some eyes within the Jets. And looking ahead, Huss, it's probably opened some eyes around the league, right? I mean, who knows where Logan Stanley's playing next year and what the Jets blue line situation looks like. But if nothing else, Logan Stanley's probably increased his potential trade value should that be uh, a road the Jets look to go down uh, moving forward. Yeah, no, it's uh, it'll be an interesting side story as we talk about many things heading into the offseason. First things first, though, put your best foot forward against a hell of a team in either Colorado or Dallas in all likelihood in the first round. Oh, do we have a Piper appearance? We do have a Piper appearance. Hello, Piper. <laughs> there we go. Everyone yeah, will lose to say hello, everybody. Right now. Yeah. Well, By the it, way, today or yesterday was Piper's third birthday, and today, April the second, is her gotcha day. It was two years ago today that uh, we brought Piper into hell, <laughs> that she joined our family. So uh, it was one day after her first birthday that she joined the McIntyre clan. So yeah, she's uh, she's having a good day today. Let me just see the chat. I'm sure the chat is going to. <laughs> yep, here we go. Everyone's losing it right now. And we actually do have a Piper emoji as well. Beautiful. So I love it. <laughs> now it is being uh, it is being spammed into uh, into the chat. Um hey, did you uh, did you hear Torts last night? Oh my goodness, did I ever. Yeah, he uh uh thank you Phyllis. Piper appreciates the happy birthday. I did hear Torts. Um yeah, that's about the worst thing you can call a Flyers team, right, is soft. Like, my goodness. Uh, the Flyers, they're in some trouble. Like, the Capitals have kept uh, – they, they've pushed, and there's a lot of teams. Like, Philly could fall right out of the playoffs here. 
Uh, so we yeah, have the, 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 the tension is increasing the angst levels and, uh, Torts is always good for a soundbite or two, isn't he? Well, I mean, yeah, that will blast at the end, but they don't have the balls to compete <laughs> at this point, but you know what? It was funny hearing how, like, I would, I would love to be a, a fly on the wall of some of the other coaches that are watching that. They're probably kind of half laughing. I will admit there were a few times during this losing streak right now that I have a feeling that Rick Bonus was thinking similar things about his oh, yeah. club, uh, but just didn't want to go there. Torts does not care, and he will go forward. And it was a wild situation for that Fedotov to make his NHL oh, yeah. debut. This guy was exiled to Siberia, came back, just had his contract whacked, and now all of a sudden he's won Philly playing with their lives depending on it each and every night. And I know they got a point last night. They didn't get the two. Washington right now, three games in hand and only one point back. And uh, Philly's going to need to, well, need to win a few of their remaining six games just to give them a chance of hanging on. I mean, John Tortorella's done everything out of the, uh, the Wildcat playbook here. He scratched his captain, healthy scratch his captain, John Couturier. Um, you know, he's gotten into it with media, gotten into it with his own players. By the way, people may have forgotten this, Huss. There, there's a alternate world scenario out there where John Tortorella is actually the coach of the Winnipeg Jets. He interviewed for the Jets job. Uh, don't forget, this is when they were obviously making a run at Barry Trotz, and that didn't when work PLD out. PLD was trying to bring his old pal from Columbus yeah. over? Can you imagine what that would have been like? But yeah, I mean, there, and and if you recall... When they announced the hiring of Rick Bonus, Kevin Shoveldayoff actually he acknowledged that they interviewed John Tortorella, and in fact, he said it was a fascinating and enlightening interview. That it wasn't what he expected. I think was how he put it. I'm not sure what he expected, but just secondhand, I've heard a lot of stories about how that interview went. It was apparently quite something, and. Uh, Look, I mean, Rick Bonus is a great talker. We've been blessed here in Winnipeg, you know, from Paul Maurice to Rick Bonus. Great sound bites, tells it like it is. But can you imagine if we had had torts? Uh, um, I mean, to, to imagine what Winnipeg sports talk would be like on a daily basis, oh. just dissecting whatever torts had to say the previous night about the Jets. It would have been quite something. Yeah, I'm not sure torts' style would mix with a few players on the Jets right now. I no. think the roster would look significantly different at this point. Uh, that has Agreed. not happened. <laughs> uh, they are uh, they are moving forward. No, I mean, that the, the Philly situation is, um, is something to pay attention to. Before we go, I have to ask you about the visitors last night. And another absolute no-show from an individual wearing number 80 that if you didn't he hear the, the fans booing the odd time he touched the puck, you'd have had no idea. Um, holy smokes. And I mean, like now there are legitimate conversations amongst people in the media, fans, about the pros and cons to a buyout, Mike. Yeah, one year in. Um, here's the tell. The fans wanted to boo Pierre-Luc Dubois every time he touched the puck. They didn't boo him very much last night because he almost never had the puck. And, you know, contrast, I, I was thinking back to, like, other players that the Jets fans would get all over and how frequently you'd hear the boos because the players were usually good players that were, you know, had the puck on their stick a lot. Just he was involved in the play so, so little that – as much as fans wanted to tear a strip into him, almost felt like by the end they probably felt a little sorry for him. But you got to feel sorry, I guess, for the Kings a bit. <clears throat> they have this monstrous contract on their books. I mean, maybe Pierre-Luc Dubois will bring his best in the playoffs. Of course, the Kings, they got to get there first. And his lackluster play, uninspiring, is not exactly helping the Kings cause as they try and push for a playoff spot. Yeah, he was, um, he was extremely quiet. That's for sure. Uh, he's been quiet. I think all three games against the jets, but he's been quiet for most of the games throughout his entire year. Um, Kenny uh, Weeb had a chat with him before the game and he, uh, he talked about how his mom was at the game last night. She didn't come to the first one. Cause he said, I didn't want, uh, didn't want her to hear all the boos, and I told her, "Well, there's going to be boos for me tomorrow too, or last night." 
Uh, but they weren't as vociferous as one would have expected just because he had so little to do with the actual play. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was a tough look for sure. And I've certainly kept in, uh, I, 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 I look at a lot of the uh, tweets coming out of LA and whatnot, and there's a lot of anger over uh, that acquisition. And yeah, where do you think he gets a, where do you think he gets a rougher run Winnipeg or Los Ooh. Angeles right now? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of money tied up in him. And I mean, the, the concept of a buyout would see, you know, what's what's really crazy, Haas, is there's rumors, of course, on at the trade deadline that there was a deal in place to actually send him to Boston, um, which ultimately fell through. Um, you know, that, that would have been something. Does he strike you as a Boston Bruin type of player either, though? Listen, like, I, I, they have a need at center. I mean, ever since they, they lost those guys and they've been yeah. great this year. His level of commitment, engagement, uh, work ethic on a nightly basis, like none of that screams Boston Bruins. Now, what could they get that out of him? I mean, I don't know, but it's a big risk. And just on the buyout, what is so fascinating, he doesn't turn 26 until July, June 24th. For players that are under 26 years old, the buyout is only one-third of the remaining salary on the contract. So instead of the two thirds buyout, which is the normal rate, right? It would only be one third if they pulled the trigger before that point. <laughs> and then it's spread out over the life of the contract, which basically would turn it into about a $1.13 million cap hit for that entire period of time and save them like over 36 million in real dollars as well. So, <laughs> I mean, unless unless he comes out and has a monster playoff run, yeah. um, which could completely change the narrative in a heartbeat, this is going to be something that I think is discussed. And who could have possibly imagined, Mike, that this is how the Dubois saga might end in L.A. after everything that he went through to get there in the first place. I just know there's a lot of uh, Habs <laughs> fans, I think, that are um... – Counting their blessings that uh, that that didn't maybe play out the way a lot of folks in Montreal probably wanted it to play out because you talk about a guy that doesn't seem I mean there can't be more pressure in LA yes his big contract certainly brings some pressure but he's a small small fish in a massive pond <laughs> in in Southern California when it comes to like pressure in the spotlight he's not LeBron he's not Otani Can you imagine. Uh, you know, if he were playing like this, but in Montreal. Oh, we were and... talking about that earlier, right off the top of the show. Yeah, I like... mean, it's, uh, maybe now they we know why he wanted to go to be himself in LA all along. They would have run him out of town uh, halfway through this season. No no question about it. By the way, we we're talking about Philly, Huss. The big focus on Philly should be what's happening this weekend in WrestleMania. Will you be watching? I will. Absol absolutely. Yes. I will. You know what? It's funny. I'm actually going to Nashville on Sunday. Oh, right. So we're going to, we're going to fly out of, out of Fargo. So if anyone knows any places showing WrestleMania Saturday in Fargo, and uh, I believe there's a big thing at the, I guess DraftKings has a big bar and uh, spot there. So they're doing it, but yes. Yeah. I will be, uh, and you know, it'll kind of be fun to be watching it in an area with a bunch of other people. So I am. Uh, I've I done am that. Be I've done that before in bars. I've done it in the movie theaters. It is a blast to kind of watch it with others. Uh, I think I'll be watching in my own home. But uh, yes, I'm. I'm a big WrestleMania fan. WWE. Guy, Are you on the road next week, or is it Ken? It's Ken on the road next week. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, will, I knew uh, I wouldn't have a problem dragging you out for WrestleMania. We'll see no, you Ken's would not. Uh, <laughs> he'll be he'll be looking for the nearest golf course. Hey, uh, hey, listen, just before we go, uh, the Fink's popping on from Abbotsford right away. Uh, what a turnaround for the Moose this season. Oh. I mean, I went to the games on the weekend. I mean, to, to think where this team was in early 2004 with that extended losing streak that went into double digits. Right. I can't give Mark Morrison and the players enough credit for the way they've stuck to it and have earned their way right back into the mix. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure Dan will will say that, you know, Thomas Millich has played a big part of that. Like a guy that he was the third stringer on the Moose. He started the year in the ECHL, and, uh, you know, he's, he's now uh, – Switch spots with uh, Oscar Salmanen, who, by the way, scored a goal the other day in the ECHL. Salmanen did. 
I believe that's the second goal he scored in his career. Um, but yeah, Thomas Millich has been, you know, a, a wall in net. Uh, the reigning Western Hockey League goaltender of the year uh, went all the way to the Memorial Cup last year. He's having just a tremendous pro season. And and really, they got such a great mix of, you know, some vets, guys like Toninato and Fialbi, um, you know, Christian Reichel, who's now a vet. But then they got all these young guys, right? And, and you know, Lambert and Chibrikov also, of course, Capo Bianco. I mean, he's leading the AHL in defenseman scoring. There's another vet that if the Jets' blue line wasn't as healthy as it's been all year, we probably would have seen Capo Bianco uh, you know, up with the Jets, and from everything I've heard, just a consummate pro and you know, great mentor and and just a great teammate. But yeah, I mean, even guys like Parker Ford, who don't forget, he had that great training camp with the Jets. I Last think he's cut. up, he's up to like 15 goals now. Part of that identity line, yeah, they got a great thing going with the Moose for sure, and uh, it's been fun to see. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice if they could go on a a real good run heading into the playoffs here as well. We're going to get the Fink on right away to talk about it. Mike, all the best. Thanks right. a lot, and thanks for popping Piper in. Uh, see, yes. uh, everyone everyone enjoyed the cameo, as always. Good stuff. All right, enjoy the week. All right, there's Mike McIntyre from the Winnipeg Creek Press. Hey, we're going to be talking playoffs, the upcoming Calder Cup playoffs, but don't forget the Stanley Cup playoffs are just around the corner. Winnipeg Jets encourage you to uh, check out packages for the upcoming season. And if you put a deposit down, you can count yourself in for priority playoff tickets right now. It's winnipegjets.com slash deposit. All the information's there on packages, map, pricing for next season. And of course, the upcoming Stanley Cup playoffs too. Again, that's winnipegjets.com slash deposit. Um, we uh, are one month closer now that we're in April to getting out to Princess Auto Stadium and cheering on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Cannot wait for that. And, of course, Princess Auto, proud sponsors of WST, all of our local teams. is a national company founded and headquartered right here in the city of Winnipeg. And, of course, Princess Auto, now that we're getting into spring, is a must-stop for uh, all the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around everything you need to complete the spring projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Uh, They're at Panet Road, Portage Avenue West, and you can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Tomorrow in the lock shop, we'll be getting into the uh, Valero, Texas Open discussion as well as Live Miami, but gang, a week from today, they'll be getting together at Augusta, doing some practice rounds before the Masters. We'll be all over it here. We'll have a few guests leading up to the Masters as well, all part of our Breezy Bend Golf and Country Club or golf reports. Um, You can find out more about Breezy at breezybend.ca. I know their incredible staff is working hard to get that golf course looking good and ready as soon as humanly possible. Also a great place for wedding bookings as well. You can find out everything about Breezy at breezybend.ca. All right, let's bring the Fink in because uh, the Moose are on the road getting ready to take on Abbotsford. And it has been a great run. Really enjoyed the games on the weekend. And uh, Dan Fink now joins us from the road. Finker, what's going on? How are you? Not too much, just uh, getting set for a, a big week here for the Manitoba Moose. Really looking forward to this one. Obviously, gets a, a good start here in Abbotsford tonight. One of those lower, a couple late games here this week, and then on to uh, some divisional action to round out the regular season. But uh, for this team, uh, looking to find some success here to get things going in Abbey. Uh, you know, listen, before we dive into, um, you know, just the recent play of the team and some of the particular players and a look ahead, Give people a rundown. Like, let's face it, we talked a month, two months ago, and things were looking very bleak. Like, honestly, even as optimistic as a person I am, I am, it seemed hard to imagine the Moose could have gotten off the mat the way they have. Well, they've done it. Um, where are they at right now? Fill us in on the playoff picture, the remaining road for the Manitoba Moose, and what lies ahead. 
Yeah, I think the last time we spoke, Huss was in Rockford, and I think the team had snapped that losing skid, and and they had won a couple, of, won a few games, kind of got rolling a little bit. And uh, back then, we were talking about how, well, you know, they're not quite out of it because the Central Division not that strong this year. And uh, as history has told us, uh, they were definitely not out of it because uh, now they have a, a reasonably healthy lead for that finals playoff spot in the Central Division and actually have a very reasonable solution to find themselves hosting the first round of the postseason because with the playoff format, uh, it'll be that four versus five matchup in the first round of the Central Division. And uh, with the Moose being where they are located in Winnipeg, bit of an outpost for those teams, the home or the higher seed will host all of those games. So obviously pretty important as uh, they try to chase down the Texas Stars. So not only have they put themselves in a strong position, they control their own destiny heading into the final nine games of the season. And uh, they have an, op a, an opportunity to possibly end up hosting those playoff games. And like you said, that was a very long shot when uh, the Moose started this road back. So uh, it's been impressive to watch how they turn things around. Their play on the road has been a, a massive part of that, but they seem to have gotten things sorted out a bit more on home ice now. And, and it has been so impressive to watch this team kind of come together, get things straightened out and really just go on this run and just night in and night out, play a pretty consistent game, which is such an advantage at the AHL level. You know, the team had the rest of uh, the Easter weekend off after playing on Good Friday and um, real strong performance by the team. They fell down 3-1. And, and, you know, I think in a lot of ways, Dan, that game on Friday um, is sort of an interesting comparison to the season overall. Doing some right things just wasn't going your way. A little bit of controversy. Find yourself down and up against it. Uh, and then the team finding a way to pull through and do what they needed to do to get the win. Yeah, and when you look at this team, especially in the second half of the season, they have seven wins now when heading into the third period trailing. And last time I checked, that was wow. tied for tops in the American Hockey League. It might have changed up a little bit since I last looked. Uh, but beyond that, they have numerous games where they've been behind in the third period on top of those seven, where they've been able to battle back and end up taking a win uh, during that uh, incredible road stretch uh they had to believe it was four of eight games that they'd been able to come back in the third period and pick up points so it's a team that just went through a horrid amount of adversity and they were in this situation where they lost 11 straight games and at the end of that run they were playing well enough to win every night and they still just weren't finding ways to score goals well all of a sudden in march the offense starts to come if not easily just pucks are going in and you see what this team can do when they start getting some pucks across the line the goaltending uh, shored up by uh, Thomas Millich really performing well and the confidence starts to come and all of a sense a game that or a team that doesn't believe they're out of any game when they get scored on Nolan Baumgartner will talk about this a lot during that 11 game losing streak you could see the bench drop when they'd give up an early goal or something like that now it's just business as usual okay well we got to score two now and uh, that's not going to happen for you every night but uh, for the moose you know what they've done a very good job at uh, being in games fighting their way through and picking up points in this run and uh, you know what they've they've done so well they've won the big games that they've needed and now looking towards this week i mean something that i didn't think i would be saying this early a lot of things have to go right but there's a possible mathematical solution for the moose to clinch a playoff spot this week a lot of things have to go right, Huss, but it's not a position that we thought we'd be in this early for this team after that run. Well, you know what? Listen, I think no matter what, I mean, looking at the schedule, this is going to probably come down to the final weekend of the regular season. And ironically enough, it is against the Texas Stars, the team that they are chasing. So there is the potential that with the right results in Texas, they could get on a plane and make the Stars follow them back to Winnipeg. Yeah, it's uh, it, a lot of fun for uh, the fans back in Winnipeg, a nightmare for the logistics side of both oh, organizations God, I can't imagine. when it comes right down to that final day. Are you staying? Do you need hotel rooms in Texas? Or are you heading back to Winnipeg? I mean, it's 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 madness. At least the Moose would have their flights booked for that trip just because that's 
what the plan was from the start of the season. You head back to Winnipeg and then sort everything out, but then you got to figure out hotel rooms. Meanwhile, the Texas starts. How do you get back up to Winnipeg? Do you have to charter a plane? Do you have to find a way onto some flight? With the, it's, it's a mess, and I do not envy the folks that have to come through with that. But, yeah, that's going to be a massive weekend. The Moose obviously need to take care of business against the Chicago Wolves and Iowa Wild, the two teams that are chasing them in the, uh, in the race for the playoffs. But both those teams have pretty tough weeks as well here, so we could see a lot more clarity after this week because, one, the Moose play four games this week, so an opportunity to pick up a lot of points and start whittling down that magic number of 11 points. Meanwhile, Chicago Wolves will be in town this weekend to take on the Moose. Those are four-point games when it comes to the magic number. And, unluckily for the Iowa Wild, they have the league-leading Hershey Bears in this weekend. That's a tough matchup. So uh, the Moose certainly with the ability to take advantage of this opportunity but they got to go out and do it here this week and try and solidify their hold on at least the, the final playoff spot in the division and then you can start thinking about trying to chase down the stars hey dan um you know for those in attendance on friday unfortunately we didn't get a chance to see brad lambert not sure if you've got an update on brad's condition and uh of course uh a nice nod from the league coming out of uh an incredible march for uh, the jet prospect Looks like my internet's taking a dive here, so sorry if uh, I'm coming through a little garbled at the moment. But uh, hey, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like it was anything. Uh, okay, perfect. Doesn't seem like it was anything uh, too serious for Brad Lambert. Uh, could be right back in here as early as this evening or this week here in Abbotsford. So we'll look to see when the lineups hit uh, later on today if he is indeed back in his customary spot. But you want to before I get to the player or the uh, rookie of the month stuff. How about Henry Neekin and stepping into that role there for Lambert? I mean, uh, he rolls into that center spot in between Jeff Malott and Axel Janssen Fialbi plays a heck of a game and scores a massive goal for the Moose to get that comeback Dude, that started. Goal, so that when that goal. Next man up a, mentality. That goal was amazing. Unbelievable goal. And, and, and it's so funny. I took a friend that had not been out to the Moose this year, a big Jet fan. And uh, we're sitting there, and he's like, and this is in the first period, like before it happened. Like, who's this 37? Who's three? Kept, kept on asking him. Henry Nikonen. And he was talking about Nikonen the whole time. And then he goes and scores that goal. And he's like, how is this guy not, you know, on everyone's radar and whatnot? He really stepped up and made the most of a big opportunity. Reminds me of Cole Perfetti and his chance last night getting in for Tyler Toffoli. But, uh, I mean, Nikonen is that a guy that probably doesn't get as much talk, has more been in the kind of the bottom six role. Man, he uh, he was phenomenal on Friday. And you know what? And I realize we're kind of diverting here from the original topic, but yeah. for Henry Nikonen, I mean, how can you not cheer for the guy? He went through 35 games this season without a point. And despite doing a lot of good things out there, he'd set up chances. He was getting chances. The puck just wouldn't go in. And then finally it does in the first game of March. Well, 14 games later, he played 13 of them. 14 games later, he had 10 points in the month, six goals. He already set a new career high for goals just in the month of March. So it's amazing. It's almost like Christian Reichel 2.0 after he had that start to the season where the puck just wasn't going for him. And then all of a sudden, he's got 17 goals this season, a new career high, one of the top goal scorers in the AHL from December 10th. He's so it just too. shows you. I mean, he's using yeah, his well, body. I mean, he's feeling it right now, it seems. Yeah, he is. And you know what? When you have a centerman that's that big and that strong, he wins a lot of faceoffs. The Moose can rely on him in penalty killing roles, things like that, to, to go out there and win a faceoff. And, uh, when you can do that, you're going to get a lot of opportunity. And uh, for Nikon, and now that the puck's been going in for him, certainly great. He was tied for second on the Moose this month with those six goals. So uh, great to see him uh, have that much success. But looping back around to another Finnish player that everybody's talking about all the time, uh, what a month for Brad Lambert. I mean, had that brilliant hot start to the month with, along with his line mates and Jeff Malott and Axel Janssen Fialbi. Cooled off a little bit towards the end of the month, but for a good portion of March was leading the AHL in scoring, ended up third. He led the Moose. And if not from a insane week from Cole Gutman in Rockford uh, could have been the HL's player of the month. So uh, great to see for Brad Lambert up to 49 points now. Um, I believe that's fourth on the all-time moose list for rookie scoring and he has an opportunity to maybe try and chase down Sammy Niku for second spot. Don't know that he's going to get up to Mason Appleton 66 for the team record, but uh, just uh, a season for him that he's been consistent, been able to rack up points, and certainly after a bit of a dip offensively through that middle portion of the season has gotten it going again, is feeling it again here in March. So uh, it's certainly been a lot of fun to watch him and that line really come together over the past month.
Hey, before we go and speak in the Lambo, a pretty nice souvenir available to fans coming up on the weekend. Fill us in on the uh, weekend set as well as Lambo bobblehead night. Okay. Yeah, we we're down to the final four home games of the regular season. I, I can't believe it. We're in April now, and uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's amazing that it's gone by this quickly. But uh, it's certainly a jam-packed schedule, and I guess we'll focus here on this weekend. Yes, we have Autism Acceptance, not, or Autism Acceptance Day excuse me, coming up on Saturday, and obviously a, a big partnership with St. Amont and such a great uh, uh initiative with the Moose and St. Amante to raise funds for those early learning classrooms as well as provide an environment with uh, some of the the lights and uh, the volume drop down a little bit to kind of assist in that uh, kind of uh, that sensory overload and then providing a quiet room and things like that just trying to make it a bit more of a welcoming atmosphere for that game because it can be a lot uh, for folks who, who deal with that sensory overload on a daily basis so uh, really looking forward to that autism acceptance game and uh, you can get the uh, very very cute plush moose on the concourse uh, in support of that initiative and then like you mentioned there Huss on the Sunday it's Brad Lambert bobblehead day uh, first 3,000 fans through the door get to take that home the mini bobblehead second uh, of uh, the two first round picks in Chaz Lucius and Brad Lambert here uh, this season. So uh, really looking forward to that day and, and perfect timing for Brad to have that player of the month. And now we get to celebrate it with the, the, or excuse me, rookie of the month. And then we get to celebrate it with uh, that uh, bobblehead day. So really looking forward to a great weekend and they are huge games against the Chicago Wolves. Can't stress that enough. And what better than a classic rivalry fighting for a playoff spot should be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, listen, I um, had a great time at the game last weekend. Uh, it is just so cool to see what's happened with this team and the turnaround this year. And i got to tell you, there was plenty of guys that I was watching on Friday that you saw what they were doing, realizing that, you know, potentially could be impactful for the big club at some point. That's the level that they're playing at right now. Good luck to the fellas out in BC. Uh, travel safe, and we'll look forward to seeing you back here on the weekend. Thanks a lot. You can catch uh, tonight's and tomorrow's game at 8.45 Central Time on cjob.com slash sports and AHL TV and see how the Moose are able to take on uh, the Abbotsford Canucks here. Their uh, third and fourth meeting in the past six games, so it should be a lot of fun. Have a great call, Finker. There is Dan Fink joining us from the road. Abbotsford tonight, again, the late one. As he mentioned, broadcast begins 8.45 p.m. And then uh, the game's on the weekend, 2 p.m., on uh, on both Saturday and Sunday. Sunday is the Brad Lambert bobblehead for the first 3,000 fans. Um, hey, speaking of playoffs, of course, it is just around the corner, and it's going to come fast. The Jets are playing the Vancouver Canucks on April 18th, and the Stanley Cup playoffs begin on April 20th. So you better get ready right now, Jet fans. Head on down to Royal Sports supplement your Jets gear with some whites for the whiteout and get ready to get loud and hopefully count yourself in for some tickets for Canada Life Center as well to see what the Jets can do once we get to the postseason. Of course, Royal Sports is ready for the playoffs, also ready for spring. All the new soccer, softball, baseball, tennis gear coming in by the day. Get ready for the change of the season and the upcoming playoffs at Royal Sports. Winnipeg's biggest and best sports superstore for over 40 years, 750 Pemina Highway. And of course, you can follow them on Insta at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. We will get to the cool bet lines in a minute. Um, not the massive 15 game slates we've seen on Tuesdays, but still quite a few and a couple real great games tonight. Listen, with the Jets coming up on the road after Thursday's game, with some big games before the end of the playoffs and the playoffs coming, you know the best place to get together with your crew to watch the big game on the big screen with big sound is always your local Boston pizza. And while you're watching the Jets and all the other great NHL or Blue Jays action, you'll be scarfing down on world-famous BP Wings, gourmet pizzas, washing it down with some ice-cold schooners. No better place than BP for your next gathering to watch the big game. And again, you can always order online and get the great taste of Boston pizza by ordering at bostonpizza.com and getting it hot and fast to your door. All right, let's uh, get Remo back in here. We are going to look at these games for tonight. Uh, good stuff with Fink and Mike. Uh, you know, it's it's funny what a win does to kind of just ease the angst of the uh, of the Jets fans. But, man, I can't say enough about this turnaround for the Moose. It really is amazing that uh, – not only are they going to be playing playoff hockey, most likely, 
but they could actually be hosting the series after the way this second, well, this last month or so has completely flipped. Yeah, and uh, bobblehead giveaway uh, on the weekend. You know, we're big uh, bobblehead guys. You don't even uh, show it. Check out this. Uh, check out this thing here, real quick. But yeah, big turnaround for the moose and. You know, it's funny. There were a couple of guys on the Jets. Oh, you got one there already. There no, a couple of guys. No, this is the Mikhail Burden. Oh, it's the Burden one. Okay, the um, Burden man. A couple of guys on the you know who were on the Jets who had a big role in December getting sent down too. I think uh, giving them some depth and Dominic Toninato and Axel Janssen Fialbi. But Brad Lambert, rookie of the month. You mentioned Henry Nikonen stepping up. Kyle Ka- Kyle Capo Bianco. <laughs> Has had a very nice season there as well, and certainly helps when you get the big goaltending uh, from Thomas Millich. So, uh, great turnaround, and uh, wouldn't it be nice to have playoff hockey for both teams here uh, this spring? Uh, as you, know you said, what? four home games left uh, for the Moose. I mean, look, you know, I know we were talking about, all right, where's Cole Perfetti playing right now, and who comes out of the lineup if he's in and Toffoli's back in. Um, I know Gustafson certainly valuable player and can be there. It will be fascinating once the uh, once the playoffs begin, and depending on what happens with the Moose, if guys are called up as black aces, what would happen if there are a few injuries? Because I can tell you right now, Capo Bianco's had an amazing season, but Axel Janssen Fialbi, the Axe Man, has been on. Uh, on one over this last little while. He is playing so well, playing with speed, a lot of confidence. I could see right now, and I mean, I know he was in, I think a lot of it has to do with waivers and who they could sit down and who they couldn't, and they didn't believe that he would be claimed. Um, come, well, we all remember what he did against Colorado earlier this season, having a real impactful uh, part of a game, kind of stealing that one uh, late in the second period. That game, actually, I think we were all at BP watching that game, if I recall correctly. Anyways, there are some options for the Jets with the Manitoba Moose as well, but I think they prefer them just keep on playing with the herd, move on to the playoffs, and see what they can do in that four or five series, assuming that is where they uh, is that is where they end up. Um, all right, let's get to the cool bet lines for tonight. We've got the Washington Capitals in Buffalo to take on the Sabers. After Philly's loss last night in OT, the Caps are one point back of Philly with three games in hand. Lindgren's going for Washington. Who knows what we're going to get from the Buffalo Sabres. They look great one night, don't show up the next night. Sabres minus 134, Caps plus 114. Florida's a big favorite, minus 228 in Montreal. Pittsburgh Penguins, and I believe the hottest player in the National Hockey League, Sidney Crosby are plus 133 dogs, Devils minus 157. Crosby, by the way, Remus, got over a point a game for the season again last night. The only player other than Wayne Gretzky to do it 19 seasons. He uh, he still keeps on playing at such a high level, making it even more disappointing that the Penguins won't be part of the, uh, the playoffs. 82 points right now in... 74 games. Uh, incredible what he's still doing. Age 36, turning 37 in August. And I agree. Very sad that he won't be in the playoffs. I mean, you never want to see a guy, you know, you want to see a guy wear the same jersey his whole career. Like it'd be weird seeing him in another jersey, but you got to get this guy in the playoffs. I think he can't be going out like this. This is sad. Uh, Trade him to Colorado, put him with Nathan McKinnon. As I don't know, although they're in the Jets division, but anywhere else, like this, I don't know. Kyle Dubas seems like every move that he made to try and turn the Penguins around uh, didn't work. So I'm curious what they do this off season. They just traded uh, Jake Gensel at the deadline. Um, just uh, it's a tough one here for Pittsburgh, but Cro- I mean Crosby, he's still doing it. Us uh, one of the greatest Dude. of all time. It's awesome. Have you seen this heater that he's on right now? So his last mm. five games, a goal and three assists against Colorado, a goal and two assists against Carolina, two assists against Columbus, an assist against Columbus, and two goals and an assist last night against the Rangers. He has 13 points in his last five games. I mean, he is just on, he's on a complete roll right, right now, and it's so disappointing they lost so many games earlier on that they're pretty much out of it. 
uh, without really a chance of making it in. We will mention Crosby again in a minute. Uh, but the other games tonight, Chicago's in New York to take on the Islanders. Islanders minus 249. The Wild, a minus 141 favorite against the Sens. Uh, Bruins at Predators. This is going to be a good one tonight. Bruins, a very slight minus 111 favorite in Nashville. Ducks and Flames in Calgary. Calgary's minus 231 faves. And Vancouver and Vegas in Las Vegas. Um, Canucks plus 114. The Golden Knights minus 134. I do like Boston tonight. And I do like Vegas. But I think we're going to put together... A, uh, oh, it doesn't seem like we've got a parlay. We were going to do one that had Boston to win, Vegas to win, <clears throat> and two points from Sidney Crosby tonight, which could be a beauty. Not up yet right now. Before the game start, though, pop by the exclusives in the lock shop uh, at CoolBet and uh, click on the lock shop and we'll get that for you. Um, Remo, I asked the, everyone in the chat this before, but uh, and I know you were heading down to the game. Did you watch any of the women's hoops last night, Iowa LSU? Just highlights. Um, you know, I was having dinner, getting ready to the game, driving to the game. I've seen, you know, highlights on my uh, Twitter feed, now called X, of just, uh, you know, bombs from near the logo. But uh, I see a lot of excitement for it. But no, I was not able to tune in. Just uh, it was phenomenal. Just because of schedule. <laughs> it was phenomenal. And I do wonder, I can't wait to find out these TV ratings. I think they are going to be absolutely massive when they finally come out. Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, it's been huge. I know TSN has done a great job with, uh, with the broadcast of the men's tournament and now the women's uh, tournament as well, uh, gaining a lot of traction. And I think that's also awesome to see. And so, you know, a lot of talk, too, about uh, what's next for Caitlin Clarkus, but... Right now, focused on the task at hand, and that's the tournament. Yeah, the uh, Paige Beckers versus Caitlin Clark in the uh, semifinal. And I think Iowa, right now when I look at uh, Cool Bet, is a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Same thing they were against um, Same thing they were against LSU yesterday and got the job done. NC State and South Carolina in the uh in the other one uh, tonight well good show it was just fun to be able to talk about a win today remus get the temperature turned down a little bit and now we get ready for the most consequential game in wst history for thursday against the calgary flames for the jets maybe not must win for wst and our crew absolutely must win yeah we've been there for three <laughs> losses in our four game package we can't have go over uh we need a win uh, the Jets are going to be favored. This is the first, the only game of our package that wasn't against a, a playoff team. Very excited. But before we go, uh, so I do have to mention, we've got to give a shout-out to Matt Boldy. Uh, not Matt Boldy. Um, Ryan Hartman uh, for his three-game <laughs> suspension. Well done. Uh, threw a stick on the ice at an official. Disgusted with the call. They came down hard with the three-game suspension. Well-deserved. Um, Seems like it was, I think they was the chance at a makeup call for not suspending him for slashing Perfetti in the face. And, uh, I mean, Karma was going to get... Three games for that, nothing for Perfetti. I mean, it still yeah. is bizarre. Um, but I don't think anyone's too upset that Ryan Hartman's going to be out for three games. He will miss the Winnipeg game. Yeah, that's... Uh, on Saturday, which some people probably don't like because they would have been looking for some sort of retribution. But... Uh, yeah, enjoy losing three game checks, you knob, and uh, don't uh, don't throw sticks at the officials anymore, even if you're all bent that you didn't get a call that you wanted. Yeah, um, yeah. Th I think there's a lot of people online who are like, "What? You got a three game suspension for that?" But I think there's, I mean, I want to like, you know, normally rip the the process, but this guy deserves a, a three game. So uh, yeah, I, I was very pumped. To see that. You know how much salary he's losing for that? How much? Oh, this is going to make you feel really good, Huss. Chris Johnston tweeting out 138690 Oh, that is Couldn't happen so, to a nicer guy. Could not happen so to painful. a nicer guy. That's so much more than a $5,000 fine. Hey, oh. um, hey, just uh, one more thing before we go. And, of course, last night was a weird 8 o'clock start. Although, shout out to the crowd. I thought the crowd, that extra hour, 
I think maybe gave people that were in attendance a chance to maybe get a couple in them before the game because uh, they were actually, sometimes those Monday games are sort of dull. That was not the case last night. Crowd was awesome. But I believe that the reason for that game is is that because Rodgers has this monopoly with the national rights, when they're playing a national game, they don't allow other Canadian teams to start within two hours of the game. So, of course, the Leafs were on at six, which meant that Edmonton and Winnipeg had to wait until 8 o'clock to start. Doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Those are the rules. But Remo, our pal Jonah at YYZ Sports Media reporting, there might be a significant change to Monday Night Hockey before the end of the Rogers deal. Yeah, so they signed this huge deal that's up. Uh, they got two more years left, and he's reporting that uh, Rogers and Amazon are in discussions surrounding mon- the Monday Night NHL package for the remaining two years. And Adam Seaborn, who's involved with Nation Network, he's reporting that he thinks Amazon will be simulcasting uh, the sports net. So we'll see what happens in some capacity uh, until it gets confirmed. But, I mean, either way, when this national deal comes up, it's not going to be all Rogers, Sportsnet, or all Bell and TSN. Um, there's going to be a streamer involved. They have uh, the Saturday night now, you know, Hockey Night in Canada package, the Monday Night National package, uh, Wednesday Night Hockey as well. So if Amazon, you know, they've already got Thursday Night Football, uh, you know, they want to get into your household more, well, uh, having a National Hockey is certainly good. And I think a lot of people already you already have Prime or something. I don't mind. I mean, I'm, I have Prime. I love Prime. I got a delivery uh, coming here uh, coming here later today. Exciting. I got, what is Baby Wipes? children's toothpaste i don't know what what it is i have to go Dude check wipes uh no no but um but we'll see what happens as far as this national package um that's something to, that's something to watch for i think here and before we get all annoyed about having to get so many channels but i'm i'm curious what's going to happen and what it's going to look like too if it is a simulcast or or they produce their own <clears throat> You know, uh, one other thing, tomorrow, don't miss tomorrow's show. It's going to be awesome. Wyshynski's coming on from ESPN. And we're going to have Shane Malloy on. Um, I, I believe we probably mentioned it yesterday, though we didn't really get into it with everything going on around the Jets. But Rucker McGrory and the Michigan Wolverines are still alive. They beat Michigan State on the weekend. They're moving on to the Frozen Four, which is not this weekend, but the following weekend. So... We'll have to wait until after that weekend for the Rucker discussions and see what happens with him, whether he's signing right now or going to wait and uh, wait and see what the what the future holds. But Malloy's going to be amazing. We'll talk to him about Rucker and the Michigan Wolverines as well as some of the other prospects. But we'll also talk about potential changes with the NIL money, potentially making CHL players eligible for the NCAA. And I can tell you this is a, a, a far-reaching topic that will touch pretty much every level of hockey in the country. So do not miss that. Um, Marat's going to jump on as well with the latest on the Jets. We'll have everything coming out of practice tomorrow. So it will be a big one as the Jets prepare for Calgary on Thursday. And uh, we'll have uh, Wyshynski and Shane Malloy on the program in addition to Marat Atesh. Big thanks to all the sponsors for helping us make Winnipeg Sports Talk happen every day and all of you for making us a part of yours. Have a great one tonight. We will see you tomorrow with a packed WST live at one on YouTube and later in the afternoon on your podcast feed. Have a great one, everyone. Oh, my God. Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.